organized by Oscar, which is the recent boot camp 2022. So it's a three day uh, uh, organized program. Then starting to day 29, then it will end second May. And we are starting, uh, the time is 5.30, each day to 8.30 PM. So we are going to try our possible to see whether we can cover the data that we can. Thank you. Uh, basically, uh, this will be the outline of uh, the presentation. Uh, we are going to look at what is called a research, uh, what, or what do you mean by research? Then possibly, I mean, research proposal. Then, if possibly, uh, we can also look at, uh, I mean, the main research process, then some of the sections uh, or the chapters that we normally cover in research, especially when you come to monograph dissertation or what you call the thesis right type. Okay. So before, what is research? No, we, we have been hearing research, research, research. What do you mean when you say research? Uh, research is basically a scientific way of communicating to arrive at a particular result to what? To infer policy or to make sure that we recommend for policy implications. And as I rightly said, you say it's a scientific right. So the word science here is a loose word that is used to not necessarily talking about the natural science, but it means research have a procedure of what? I mean, approaching it. So we normally have what we call research covers what we call the Emirat approach. The Emirat means yes, that it must have an introduction. Uh, it must have what we call uh, the review or it must have what we call the methodology. It must have what we call the real succession or the result section, then you must also have the discussion and the conclusion aspect of a research. So if you're communicating in research, this is the main process that it must cover. So that's why you call it that it's a scientific way of communicating to arrive at a particular hot outcome for policy implication. So research, as the word by itself means, meaning you're going to search and search again. So meaning investigation. So if there's a need for you to research or to investigate that issue or that phenomenon again, it's basically a research that you want to undertake or you want to cover. And uh, we have a structure of a research proposal. So uh, with the research proposal, when you said proposal, it means uh, you are literally proposing something for it to be accepted or you are trying to convince something to let them know why you are doing it and what is the essence of you doing that. That's basically the meaning of proposal. So it's like you proposing a lady, excuse me for my language here, but it means that like you're trying to convey the lady to accept why uh, he should be your fiance or your partner or your husband and whatever way that you can use to, I mean, describe. It's basically the same thing as when you come to recent proposal. So in recent proposal, we have several, I mean, uh, subsection that it must cover. And one of the things is called title. Uh, or what we normally call the research topic. And, and the research title, is, is, it should be catchy, it should be attractive. Anyone who sees it, sometimes when you are trying to download the paper, you look at the topic, you say, you say, oh, this paper will serve me an important information, or it will give an information that I want. So it means the topic is very, very important. So, and it must be also, it must have some element that it covers. It must also not be too lengthy. So there's a criteria for you to frame your title. And people normally say that a research title should not exceed a word count of what? Uh, uh, not word count, uh, 15 words. So not the word count, but the 15 words. So it shouldn't have a long, I mean, sentence that is uh, I mean, trying to capture your research title. It should be very, very simple, but very catchy. And we, we, we also have we also have what you call the background. We'll cover them once we are going to the detail, but these are the real structure of a research proposal. So we also have what you call the background. You must introduce, you must let us know why you are embarking on that before you even tell us the, 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 the exact problem of the phenomenon that you're investigating. So that's the background basically. And we also have what you call the research problem. As I said, and there's that. I normally say the research problem is different from society problem. So the recent problem is that you have identified some knowledge gap that you intend to fill. So you let, you let us know what you want to do. Then we also have what they call the objectives. Of course, uh, uh, there's a reason for you to embark on a proposal or there's a reason for you to embark on a research and, and, and you must tell us those reasons. And I don't know what you intend to achieve, achieve. What are the outcome and uh, that is the basic the research objective. So you must have your broad uh, goal and you must also have the specific research objectives. 
then we have the research question or what you normally call the hypothesis based on what you intend to achieve. And these are normally derived from the research that we have already stated. So we also have what normally what we call the significance of study, the rationale. Some of them also call it the justification of the study. Yes, of course. And, and, and you must tell us the significance of what is the importance of this study in policy, in academic country you are embarking on this research. So that is basically the significance or the originality of the study. Some people also put it that way, the originality, the importance of it, that is it. So we also have the literature review. We'll cover them too, but I just want us to highlight them. You have the literature review, basically reviewing previous studies or previous report or previous information to guide you on your process of doing the research. And we also have what we call the methodology and the methods. The methodology is basically the systematic process of you arriving or achieving your results. Then we also have sometimes, if it's a proposal, you must tell us the schedule, you must tell us the time bound, the time plan. You must let us know so that you will not, I mean, uh, 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 try to, I mean, uh, uh, we should know when and where you uh, how you're going to do that. And it should be given a time bound on that. Then we have the budget. Of course, research is very expensive. Nowadays, of course, research is very expensive. So you must tell us the cost budget that you must include when you're proposing a research. Or if you are writing, let's say, a grant proposal or whatever proposal you are writing to, you must let us know the cost so that people know that whether they can, I mean, sponsor you or they can fund you or they, if they, whether you can handle the cost aspect. Then, of course, you, you should not leave the reference aside because you pick information to them. You must let them know that in the academic is very key. And this is very ethical to make sure that. This you include all, all those information, the sources that you pick those information from. So this is it. So uh, uh, this one, I'm, I'm, I'm now let's come to our uh, user research. You normally write what we call a monograph. It uh, must cost process. And come to University of Cape Coast, uh, our research normally experience. Some of them they, they they have six chapters. Others do even have seven chapters. But UCC, for instance, they have. Uh, I mean. Uh, the five chapters. So, irrespective of all, whatever you find yourself, you may, at the end of the day, you fall within of one of these chapters that we are trying to talk about. So, we have the chapter one, the chapter two, the chapter three, the chapter four, and the chapter five. We will get to know what each chapter entails and what it means. So, now let's go to the chapter one. So, so if you look at the, the University of Cape Coast, uh, I mean, uh, book uh, guideline or uh, what do you call research guideline, uh, the chapter one must cover some subsessions. And these are the subsessions that it must cover. So as I've already mentioned, you must give us the background of the study. You must give us the overview of the study, the context of the study. And you must also let us know the exact problem of the study, which is the research problem or the statement of the problem. Then you must state the research purpose, the objective, possibly the hypothesis or your research question, depending on what you are trying, you are investigating or, or what you intend to achieve. Then, uh, we also have the significance of the study, the rationale. Uh, let me clarify something here before I move. Uh, in, in, in proposal, we, we normally refer to a justification. Why justification? Because in that sense, we are now proposing it. But when it comes to, I mean, the main work itself, that is where we capture it as the significance of the study. Some of them also call the rationale of the study. But when you're proposing it, you might justify. So you give the justification. So people normally confuse, but you see some other institutions too, they will still capture this section as justification of the study, but they all mean the same thing. Yes. So we also have what we call the limitation. Of course, you cannot cover everything in this world. So you must let us know your limits. You must let us know your the scope. And that is why you must, uh, you must give us the limitation of the study. You must also give us the, <clears throat> uh, the limitation and the limitation. So the delimitation already emphasized on the scope, uh, the methods, and whatever you're going to cover, then the limitation here is talking about, I mean, the fallout from the study. 
what you were able to I mean, handle and others that you couldn't, you might let us know. Then we also have for definition of terms. People also call it operational definition or operational terms. And here, operational terms here that there are some concepts that you have used in where you should let an, uh, uh, every layman understand the meaning of those concepts. For example, we are in the geographical field and someone is in, let's say, a uh, natural science like environmental science or something, you don't understand what you are, I mean, meaning by using geographical terms. So you must operational those uh, concepts or those terms for people to understand you what they mean. And, and, and we have the organization of the study. Of course, you must structure your work well so that the reader will know that, okay, from this section, I'm going to this, from this chapter, I'm going to this, and that's the essence of the organization of the study. Yeah. <clears throat> if I'm moving fast, please let me know so, so that I can continue. I can, I mean, I can control how I speak. I hope you, are, you, you hear from me. Hello? Yeah, we are, we are hearing. Okay, thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay, so, uh, okay. So from there, we go to the chapter two. So the chapter two is normally captured the literature review. And, and in essence, it must cover the, the theoretical framework what do, you, what do you mean by theoretical framework? We got to know when you get there, you will know what we mean by theoretical framework. Uh, some people also call it theoretical model. And it must also have what we call the conceptual issues, the conceptual review, all the various concepts related directly or indirectly related to the work. You must, I mean, present them or you must review literature on them. Then you must also show the empirical evidence of previous studies, what people have done empirically. You must show us the empirical evidence by giving us the kind of method they use, I mean, the variable they included, I mean, the context in terms of the geographical areas and the gap, if possibly, and what you want to add on that, that's the evidence of that. Then we all, from there, you, have, you must learn a lesson. You must learn a lesson in a sense that from the theoretical framework to the conceptual framework to the, or the conceptual issue to the uh, empirical evidence, you must know what is going on with regards to whatever you are investigating. That is the learning lesson here. After learning the lesson, it will guide you to now use the kind of, or to now know the kind of variables you must include or the kind of variables you must use to draw. Or you can also adapt some conceptual framework from another person's way. Or you can even adapt it and also modify it so that it will guide you when you get to the next chapter, which is the methodology, it will guide you the kind of, I mean, especially when it comes to the, the development of the instrument. So all these subsections of chapter two are very important. And chapter two, I must emphasize, is one of the important aspects of the way. If your chapter two is not well presented, you have a lot of issues. And that is why you must also pay a critical attention to chapter two, which is the literature review. So we get to know and I will explain in the details. Then with the chapter three, that is basically the, the, the research methods. Some of them also call it research methodology, but I mean, they are used uh, interchangeably. But in, in the UCC book, they, they, they refer to the research methods. And the research methodology is the process and the methods are the tools, the materials. If you go to sciences, they call it the materials and methods. So that is basically that you, others do also the research protocol. So the research protocol here means that the, 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 the blueprint of what is going to guide you to gather your data, to analyze your data, to present your data, to interpret your data, and to draw conclusion of the data is also dependent on the chapter three. So with this, we have what we call the research approach. But before the research approach, I might emphasize that you must, I mean, the research philosophy is very important. You must, you must, you know, you must know the philosophy that is guiding you. And that one will guide you also tell you the kind of approach you are adopting. Then with that approach, you also come to the research design, of course. Then you go to the, uh, the study area. If, if sometimes you also use institutions or possibly organizations, you might let us know the kind of organization or institution you're dealing with. Then the population. Then within the population, we have what you call uh, this, a target population and an accessible population. When I get there, we will emphasize all those things to, to, to know the differences. Then we all have the what you call the sampling procedure. The sampling procedure is the the sampling method, how you're going to arrive at your target population, uh, your accessible population, or what people call the study population, uh, you must tell us. And the sample size, of course, uh, which method did you use to, I mean, to arrive at your sample size? You must let us know. So all is in within the sampling procedure. Then, then uh, you must also tell source if it, uh, the data, if it's a existing secondary data that you're using, or if it's a primary data, 
or if it is a report, you might let us know the source of the data that you're going to use and the instrument that you're going to collect the data that must be presented as well. Very important. Then if possibly you must tell us how you're going to, I mean, collect that data, the procedure of you getting that data is very important. And after getting the data, what is the next step? How are you going to process the data? How are you going to handle the data? How are you going to manage the data? And how are you going to also analyze the data and present the data are very important. The ethical issues, everything are very, very important under this chapter. Okay. So from there, then we go to the chapter four. So with the chapter four, we, we, we are going to, I mean, basically focus on uh, the, the data processing and analysis, uh, the data presentation, the data interpretation or what normally call it a discussion aspect. Uh, we have all, all the implication of the data drawing conclusion and the recommendation that you're going to give. That one will also cover in the chapter five. So upon all the, then you must summarize the whole work in the last chapter with respect to UCC guidelines. The last chapter, where you the chapter five, capture the summary of the study. It, it, it must, major, you must highlight the major findings of the study. And based on the major findings of the study, you must draw a conclusion. And you must also give a recommendation for policy implications. You must give a direction. And if possible, you can also have to give, especially when it comes to thesis, you must also add what you call the feature direction of the next step, or what you normally care. I mean, suggestion for future studies, what the next step, maybe, and these are normally coming from the, the limitation, maybe things that you were able to cover and things that you were not able to cover, at least a next step can also, I mean, handle that aspect. Thank you, because it's not everything that you can able to handle, handle in a research, okay. So we haven't covered all these things. Let's now come to a research proposal context. So, so uh, we have a very, I mean, uh, presentable, I mean, uh, figure here or a diagram here or a picture here to, to just highlight everything about research uh, I mean, proposal content. So as I've already mentioned, we have the research topic or the research title. Uh, uh, we have the research problem. Do you understand? So we have the research problem. The topic will give you the problem. And there you now have your title. So from there, you also have the risk with the research title. So you, you can also, from the research objectives, you, you can also have what you call the research hypothesis, especially when it comes to, I mean, uh, those who are quantitative bias, uh, the, the positivist people or the economists and those my people, they normally, I mean, hypothesize their, their work. So because they normally try to, I mean, uh, test. Yes, so that is there is a hypothesis is very important. Then we have to cover the literature we have already mentioned. Then the methods, of course, you must also tell us. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> now, so with, with, with the introduction, uh, these are where you must, I mean, give us some key information about the work. You, this is where uh, you, you might draw the attention of people to know what is the issue at hand and why you have to, I mean, or why that issue is very critical. So we must ask some sensible questions here. So with the introduction, we have what we call, you must ask the question of what, you must ask the question of how, you must ask the question of why. So, so, so uh, my, my, my former supervisor used to tell me that it is, you don't need to think too much. You don't need to think too much to, 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 uh, to write a good introduction. But just sit down, I mean, and, and, and break things into simple. Don't, don't be frustrated, you know? So just look at what people are trying to see then see what you want to go. You understand the originality. If you know where people are going, you also know where you can also go. And that is where the originality comes in. But if you don't know where you are going, people will still mislead you. And at the end of the day, you are going to arrive at how they ended. But if you know where they are going and where you want to go, it makes it very simple here for you to present your introduction. So we, we, we must summarize the proposal by giving the what. You must summarize the proposal by giving the why. You must present, uh, summarize the, the, the proposal by giving the how. So the how here is, how are you going to do that? How are you going to achieve what you want to do? How are you going to achieve what you claim to do? That is most important. What, what is the issue at hand? Why is the issue critical? These are very questions that you must ask in the, I mean, this. Is, so in, 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 in that introduction, uh, you must start from the global perspective, to the maybe, uh, if possibly the, the, the Middle context or the African context, then you narrow yourself to the local context to see what is going on. And you must present with fact. You can't just give what you call a sweeping information here. You must present with fact. 
So they are very important. Summarize them and put it there. So from there, we go to the literature review. The same question must be asked there, why and how? So the why here, you, 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 you must hand on some issues, like uh, uh, you must ask, you must search the what people have done. You must look at the method they used, the kind of methodology they used. Then possibly, are there any gaps? Are there any gaps? Is there something that they left out that you think you want to fill that gap? You must find a hole. And after finding the hole, you must look for the bit. So, so we have the we have some C's. We have what to saw C's in literature review, and you must make sure that you cover these things. You must compare, you must contrast, and you must critique. Critique is very important. That is why I told you earlier that learning a lesson in literature review is very important. And if you do a good literature review, your work will be very clearly to understand what you are trying to do. So that is it. So when it comes to the methodology in proposal, the how is the what the most important here, the how. Why? And the how here I means how are you going to get it? What kind of method are you going to use to arrive what you want to do? The how is very important. What are the tools? What are the materials? What are the ways that you have to use to get what you want to do? There's the reality. How do you know that reality? And how are you going to do that reality? So here, that is why I was emphasizing the philosophy is very important here. So here, the, the, the way you think, the ontology is very important here. The way you know that the reality, that is the epistemology is very important here. And how are you going to solve that reality? That is all. The methods here, then the ethics guiding you, the axiology aspect, they are more important, the axiology aspect. When you get there, you go to know all of them. And that is the method. So with this, you will get your research approach, the research design, or the research procedure, the kind of data you must use, then the procedure of getting that data, then the selection and access, which is the sampling aspect. So is it human subject you are dealing with? What are the ethics guiding that? What is the cost? What is the funding? They are very important in the research methodology. When you're writing a proposal or when you're proposing, you must present this one to convince people to know, for the people to know that indeed, what they are trying to do makes sense. Research must be justifiable. Research must be justifiable. Uh, 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 um, I remember one professor, I, 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 I was fortunate to be part of a, a workshop. And he said, he said, you can't give a sweeping information. Yes. Knowledge is not a positive of one person. So you can't give a sweeping information. So meaning whatever you give must be justified. Whatever you're trying to present must be justified. And this is why the research methodology is how, how, how. You must answer that question very well. So when you get to the methodology there, think yourself, how? How am I going to get this resource? How am I going to get my data? How am I going to present my results? How am I going to analyze? How am I going to present? How am I going to discuss? Everything is very important. If you don't do the methodology well, it affects the subsequent chapters, which is the chapter four, the five, and as well. So, yeah. so the, the, the preliminary data, yes, of course. Preliminary data is, is very important. Uh, if there's evidence to show, let us know. Uh, uh, inform the methodology. What did they use? Mm? Let us know the findings. What did they use? And, 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 and you must, is it anything wrong? Is there, is there anything wrong with that preliminary data? Or is that preliminary data signaling you for something? You must know. And preliminary data is very important, especially when you are writing a, 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 a grant proposal or research funding. Yes. Uh, so people normally even embark on what they call a parallel study just to get a preliminary data to present in the methodological assess. Yes, because. This preliminary data will move the funder to say, hey, this issue is critical. Let's do something about it. Let's give money to this person to handle it. Let's give money to this guy. Indeed, if it was street trading, wow, what are the data? Let us know. Okay, so now we go to the statement of limitation. So with a statement of limitation, uh, that is basically, I've already mentioned earlier, uh, uh, you cannot cover everything. And of course, there will be some fallout in your research. So what are the alternatives? What are the weaknesses? what your research will do. You must cover that, whatever you are not able to present it so for, for other people to take it further, or if possible, you yourself can also take it further. So that's the meaning of the statement of limitations. Very, very important here. Then you must draw a conclusion, what, how, and why comes in here, in the contribution, and how you're going to contribute, that is it, and why you're contributing to that is very important. Okay, 
So having covered all the, let's come to the recent topic itself. So yeah, if there's any question, let me know. Uh, let me see, let me open my chat so that I can see whatever question is going on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, no so, so let's come to the recent topic. A broad subject matter area to be investigated. Of course, that is it. After identifying it, you said, Prof. Oh, I said there isn't any question. Are you talking so to me? Yeah. OK. I think maybe I'm not the one he's talking to. OK. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay. So there is a topic here is, I mean, a broad subject matter here to be investigated. If it's about puberty, it's very broad. So you must narrow it to, to uh, I mean, to, to investigate. So if it's about uh, puberty, what kind of puberty are you dealing with? Puberty in the coastal issues. Is it puberty in agriculture? What is the dimension of the puberty you're dealing with? You must know, and that is why you must think. Uh, come, uh, people normally, I mean, I, I face difficulty in coming out with a research topic, and there are several ways of getting a research topic. You follow the current trend. You must register all uh, various research platforms, ResearchGate, uh, Google Scholar. Uh, some, sometimes, if I know Oscar is into some issue, uh, uh, Oscar research interest is in this that I have interest. I must follow Oscar and also register Oscar. So if I register Oscar and there's a platform that you can, I mean, even check all related papers. So anything or anyone who is doing something related to what Oscar is doing, pop up on your email. Then you will know the current trend. You know what is going on. Then you are now to also fine tune to come up with a very nice research topic. So if you are enrolled in your program, let's say a first year in Enfield, you don't need to wait to get to, I mean, second year before you are thinking of research proposal, a research topic. No, first year and I start following identify an issue of concern, identify a thematic area. A thematic area could be, is it climatic, is it climate change? Is it about rural poverty? Is it about food security, uh, food insecurity or what? Is it about remittance? Is it about financial inclusion? You must identify a thematic area, follow researcher in that thematic area, then you will come out with a very nice research topic. Look at what they are doing and now try to also see what you want to do. Okay, so for example, so we have a recent, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, 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 topic here, deteriorating qualities of marine habitat. Yes, yeah, so the, uh, 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 we have realized that due to anthropogenic activities, uh, we, we, let's first of all, let's know the essence of what marine habitat. So, but they save a lot of importance. They, they have, they save a lot of ecosystem and we function like uh, uh, supporting services, I mean, uh, whatever you can mention of, but due to other factors, either global warming, climatic factors, or non-climatic factors like anthropogenic activity due to the uh, population growth, they have caused a lot of harm or it put a lot of threat to the quality of marine habitat. So we want to look at it. This is very broad, you understand? So you must tell us what you want to do. So you can see this is very broad. It, it, it is very difficult I mean, for someone to know what they are really going or what you are really looking at. But this is the broad area of, I mean, uh, 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 you have identified first. And with this, you now come to get what we call the research title. So waste management uh, practice is also a very broad topic. You know, so when you just capture a topic as waste uh, management practice, you know, uh, 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 is a topic, but it's be difficult for someone to know whether uh, this is a research title because uh, it, you must have an element of research title that we get to know. So let's try to know that. So these are some of the research topics which are very broad. Okay. So we also have what we call security on the university campus. You know, it's very broad. When you say security, what kind of security? You have, I mean, different forms of security. What kind of security you are talking about? So you might let us know the kind of security. So these are just broad topics. But with these topics, it will now say, uh, direct you as to how to come out with your Research title. So we also have called crime rate in urban areas. So these are broad areas, but it's an issue of concern. It's a thematic area that you can look at. So that's why I first mentioned that the thematic area will now draw you what you call a, 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 a 
attention to a particular issue of concern that you want to investigate. So coastal erosion, yeah, it's, it's, it's very broad. So you should tell her the kind of uh, audio you are dealing with. Deforestation. So these are, I mean, the, uh, land degradation, adolescent reproductive health and those stuff. So now let's come to the reset title itself. You know, let's come to the reset title. So as I've mentioned earlier, the reset title must be very catchy. It must draw, I, I'm, I'm following a research platform called Researcher, Researcher Life. And researcher, sometimes you see some of the research title then it will amaze you unless you read to know what is going on. It will draw your attention to read that read paper because how they come with their title is very amazing. It's very catchy. Sometimes uh, you, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't even uh, know what they're trying to say. But when you read, you get to know that, oh, wow, this is what they're trying to do. So it must be catchy, but you must specify some concepts that will draw your attention. You must have some variables that you must investigate. If possibly, you must have your outcome variable then other predictor that you want to I mean, measure. So that is it. OK, so, so this is an example of a research title. So strategies for land use pattern and habitat quality of the forest elephant. So you can see that this one, it has highlighted some variable here. So it says strategies for land use pattern. And you're going to look at the strategy for land use pattern on what? the quality of the hot forest elephant. So there are two variables here that have to be handled. So we are looking at how land use is being practiced, the land use pattern is being practiced for the strategies for that. And you must, after doing that, you must see whether it has some implication on the hot habitat quality of forest hot elephant. So you see there are two things there you can, you can measure. Thank you. So we have another example like uh, uh, attitude and perception towards waste management in Cape Coast. So here, it has even gone further to give us the context, the geographical area, the scope of that. Uh, so your research item must have the scope. So we can see we have some uh, variables like attitude. You have something called perception towards waste management. So you, the person want to look at how attitude and perception, I mean, influence what waste management practice in what Cape Coast, do you understand? So. There's two things that he can look at relationship to identify there to see whether indeed whether the attitude can influence or uh, waste management practice in Cape Coast. And he has given at the context Cape Coast. So he has given at the scope, the limitation of the study is already defined. So it, yeah. Okay, so I, I also have a labor standard application in Ghana, influence and pattern. Labor standard in Ghana. Labor standard application in Ghana. Influences and pattern. Yeah. So motivation and job performance. Job performance. The outcome variable job performance. What influence job performance? He's looking at how motivation can influence job performance. So there's two things, and he's also given at the scope UCC. So you see, the topic is very simple here, but it, it, if someone can really understand what the person is trying to do, you understand? Yeah. So when you just say it, instead of just saying job performance at UCC, it's very broad, but yeah, he's looking at two things, motivation and job performance. So he has narrowed the scope for us to know he's looking at job performance and motivation and job performance. And that is why uh, we call it a research topic. And you see, they are not lengthy. As I've mentioned earlier, that a research topic should not be more than, I mean, 15 ways. Someone have to read a topic. I don't know, before you finish reading the title, then the person become confused. No, it should be simple, understandable, yes. Okay, so participation in lectures and students performing at UCC. Yes, two variables here presented. You want to look at how students participate in lectures and how it influences their performance. And the context is UCC. Very important here. The same thing here too. So now let's look at the issues. I mean, what drive a research title or research issues? Let's look at the influence factors. So we are, as I've already mentioned, how do you come up with a research topic? Or how do you arrive at a research topic or research title? So you must read, 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 and read. You must read. If you are not some, if you are someone who, who, who don't like reading, then then brother, you better advise yourself. My sister, you better advise yourself because you have to read. If you don't read, you present what people have already presented. And that also goes against research ethics. Yes. So you must read and be broad. If you don't know how to read, or if you don't like reading, people will mislead you. People will mislead you. Uh, 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 you cannot create a good impression. 
So people will mislead you. But if you read and read, you know all the distinction, the differences, the nitty gritties, and you know where you're leading. We normally have, you normally see something like, if you don't know where you're going, people will mislead you or misguide you. So you must show the direction. How can you get the direction? You might get the direction through reading. <clears throat> you must observe events or empirical or evidence. You must observe that they are very important. That's why I'm saying that you must follow trending issues. And these are the things that you should come, you will help you to come up with a research topic or issue. Consultancy, you must consult people who have the knowledge, the expertise. You must consult them. If you know uh, someone like Bashir is into rural development or he's a very expert in rural development so that he can guide them. So we say it's authoritative, experience is very, and that's what consultants count a lot. Yes, resources. You must also consider topics. When you consider topics, you must look at the time. Uh, Fatima, sorry. Well, you must look at the time. You must look at the finance, and you must look at the people that you're going to use, the subject, the personnel. This, uh, you must look at it before you come up with a topic. There are some topics. I remember level 200, uh, uh, Kufu, uh, is it Kufu, uh, in the uh, 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 School of Development at the University of Cape Coast. He said, hey, some topics are very nice, but they are not researchable. Why are they not researchable? They are not researchable because of some reasons. Time, finance, personnel, they are very important. You must consider all these things before you draw your, 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 your topic. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, your politics, personality, beliefs, preferences, academic specialization. Yes, you must emphasize all these things twice. You are, I mean, you must know where you are going before you come up with a research title. Yeah, even though it will go against you. The methodology is very important. The methodology is very important. Are they method that you can use to arrive on? The topic you have chosen, can you do it? How are you going to do it? Are there methods available? What kind of methods are you going to use? Consider all these things when you are trying to come up with your research title or research topic that you should very important. Data need, very important. Data need. Uh, there are some, there are some uh, people who came to me uh, and I look at the topic and say, no, this, this, it will be difficult for you to get the data. Yes. Just look at the topic that you know that indeed you will face difficulties when it comes to data. Yeah. So these are very important. You must look at. Yes, that uh, is sometimes a, an issue, a less issue of concern, but it's very critical. You must look at it when you are deciding a research topic. Okay. The media, the issues in the public domain, yes, can also invite someone to come up with a research topic. Okay. So now let's see how to frame the topic, the title. Keywords. I've already mentioned that a research title must have some element, key element or keywords. So we, we, Relation to the problem. You cannot be trying to look at an information here, then your research topic is looking at different things. It doesn't make sense, excuse from my language. You must make sure that there's a synchrony, there's a synergy between the problem that you are trying to look at and the topic, the topic that or the title that you want to frame. So, so for example, let's say you're looking at, let's say, uh, social protective services on livelihood of fisher folk. Then the problem statement, you end up talking about different things altogether. There's no connection. So your title should relate to the problem statement. It's also, it must also relate to the objective, of course. Let's, let me tell you the same example like the social protection service. You're looking at social protection services on livelihood outcomes of social folks. So what kind of livelihood outcome? I'm looking at the food security. I'm looking at, let's say, poverty, income poverty. I'm looking at, let's say, nutrition quality. All these things, my topic must highlight something on that. So you see that I've used the word livelihood. So even though livelihood is big, but when it comes to the problem statement, I must define what livelihood means in the context of what I'm trying to do. So objective, if I would get objective, I must also make sure that those things that highlight in the problem statement are captured in my objectives so that there should be a, syn a, 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 a synchrony here or there should be a link. The length is very important. I've mentioned that the number of words, I said title should not exceed 15 words, standard. If, if I'm wrong, someone can correct me for that, but the standard, there is a title should not exceed, I mean, 15 ways, yeah. 
the maximum should be 15 ways. Yeah, of course. Um, you can even capture four, four ways to become a topic. And it, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, thank you. So the time and the space, very important. The time and the space, this define the scope. The time and the space, you might tell us, if, 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 if it's a, a, a cross sectional data, if it is a time series data, you must, I mean, let us know the time bound, the space, do you understand? Uh, the space here can be the geographical area and the location of course. Okay, so that is basically keywords you must look at when you are finding your title. Now let's come to the background of a study. Uh, the background of the study is very important, I've, I've already highlighted. Uh, Prof, Professor, Professor Lim, uh, the current Ghana Statistical Service, uh, uh, I remember when we were doing the master's 2017, he was our research I mean, uh, uh, lecturer. So he said that when you don't motivate your work at the background, you will not find the problem at the previous situation. So you must motivate the work well. When you motivate the work, the work very well. When it comes to the problem statement, it is clear where you want to go. But if you don't motivate it, so he doesn't have time to read the whole work of a PAD thesis or an NFL thesis. You look at the background of the study, then he go to your problem statement to see the connection, then the objective, then he jump to the, uh, the, what you call the methodology. He doesn't have time to read the whole literature review and the rest. Do you understand? But, you know, so the background is very important here. So why I'm saying the background is very important. The background gives the broad discussion of the statement or the issue or the phenomenon you are investigating. If it's about COVID-19, you must give a background information of COVID-19, motivate, let us know the facts, the, 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 the trending issue of COVID-19, the prevalence rate, the mortality rate, the impact on whatever you are dealing with. If you are dealing with on food security, you must let us know statistics figures on COVID-19, it impact or not uh, food security. That is the broad discussion. And if you're able to do this, when you come to the problem statement, it makes your way very easier. So background here basically is telling us the society problem. Then you highlight the research problem. So all concepts, variables in a title must be mentioned, yes. But I've already mentioned this. So you cannot be doing something different. Your title is looking here, your background is looking here. There's no connection. We don't do that in research. So all concepts, variables in the title must be mentioned. And briefly, it must be discussed from a broad perspective. It must be discussed from a broad perspective. That's why I mentioned earlier that, I don't know whether you people heard me that, you must start from the global perspective. Let us know the issue at hand from the global perspective. If possibly, let us know at the, uh, African uh, perspective, or what do you call the regional perspective, then you narrow it to the local perspective, then you give us the broad perspective of it. Then, so we can see that we, from the broad perspective, we have the universal, which is the global perspective, then you highlight the important issues. So you must also give us the national perspective or the local perspective. Let us highlight it and let us know what is going on. Yeah. So you see, a, a situation analysis is very key here in background. When we say situation analysis, the, the, the kind of issue you are investigating, what is the situation at hand? What is the current issue? Why is it critical? And what do you have to do with that issue? It's very, that's what we normally call the situation analysis. And it's very important. If it's about a, a, an organization or a geographical area, for example, let's say you're dealing with coastal area, what is the uh, issue at coastal areas? What is currently happening? If it's a uh, premier fuel, what is premier fuel? Why is premier fuel an issue at coastal areas or an issue among fish apples? Use figures, use facts. I've mentioned this and I'm going to mention it again. Use statistics to support your argument. Use statistics to support your discussion, your discussion, and use statistics to give an indication of dimension of you have must you must present statistics. You don't give sweeping information. Now use report. If it's about SDGs goals you are dealing with, use report. People have tracked, people have done a lot of work 
tracking the, the progress of the uh, SDGs goals. Give us the fact on that about the issue you're dealing with. If it's about poverty, what is the current rate of poverty? Give us the fact. Hmm? Is there increase? Is there progress meet? Or it is, I mean, retrogression. Let us know. And why do you have to? I mean, uh, okay. So, citation very important. Our, uh, citation is very important because we have picked information from people's work. So you must show respect to these people. You must show, I mean, respect to these people by citing their works. So. According to so and so and so, and we have different forms of citation. When you get there, you got to know how we do citation. So I would advise even there are different ways of doing citation. We now we have we now have what we call citation management, I mean applications or software that we can use, like Mendeley, like Zotero, like uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, other uh, ones that we can talk of, I've forgotten some, but you can you can use that. Mm -hmm. To manage your this, with those, uh, this you can even cite a website and give credible information on that. Okay, so I presented this figure here to summarize. I mean, uh, what do you call a background? So you can see this is what uh, I've forgotten my sciences, my basic science, but this is an inverted funnel or this is a funnel, a cone. Uh, yeah, this is, I don't know, this is a cone or a funnel. I don't know, but, you know. So this one is telling us how your background should be presented. So from the broader perspective, you see how the, 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 the cone is, I mean, the mat of the cone is up to the eight or the edge. So that's how you must present your background. So you must give us the background by giving us the known from the information. The known information is what is there, what are the what are the figures, what are the statistics, what are people saying about what you are trying to say? What is the knowledge gap? What is not known? The knowledge gap, what is not known? What is the information that was not captured? Or what is the context that was not covered? That is another gap. It's very important. Then you must raise a question. You must hypothesize your, 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 your objective or the main purpose of the study. What do you try to establish? Do you understand? And that is why the purpose, uh, the statement of the purpose come in. Then uh, uh, you must uh, give us the approach, the methodology or what do you call the, uh, the plan of attack. If you are trying to, I mean, I mean, uh, arrest the lion, you must tell us how you're going to arrest the lion. If people are arresting the lion from behind and you are trying to arrest the lion facing the lion, <laughs> you must tell us how you're going to arrest the lion. And this is very important. So you must give it a approach or the plan of attacking the issue or the plan of addressing the issue and how that thing you cannot, you must propose a solution if possible. So this is basically the, the background statement. <clears throat> So now we are going to give an example of background statement. So we, we have first example here, like uh, uh, that you're trying to see. So emergency healthcare is an essential service in every society. This is broad. You see, he has given us the global perspective of it. Then he has, he, he didn't end there. You want to emphasize with a fact. You want to validate the information he has given. Then he said, according to ATA 2006, emergency healthcare involved the provision and the management of assistance and healthcare service in timely manner. So now you understand when you talk of emergency health, I mean healthcare, you understand the meaning now. So provision of emergency healthcare is well developed in Western Europe and Northern American countries with almost 95% of population having timely access to health. So he has given a fat year, a broad perspective. Now you come to the regional context, context. now you come to the local context to see what is the issue. So in the sub-Saharan, that's the regional concept. In the sub-Saharan African or sub-American emergency healthcare is da, 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 you know, it contrasts to what you are presented or it is in the same line. Then what is the local content? If you are dealing with Ghana, let us know the issue of emergency health. Let us know the issue of emergency healthcare in Ghana. <clears throat> Now let's go to the problem statement. So before the problem statement, let me emphasize again that research problem is different from society problem. Research problem is different from a society problem. Why? People normally 
I mean, someone will read your work. I remember Prof. Nim normally brings some examples to, I mean, to present to us. And you read, read, read. You tell us, you see research problem? Then he said, he said no. He said yes. Because there's no research problem. He's, the person is still motivating the same issue. He's not telling us how he's going to go. Uh, he's not telling us the exact I mean, research problem. So when you say research problem, in, 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 let's say you are dealing with teenage pregnancy in our mama community. I'm using mama community in UCC here. Yeah. And, and teenage pregnancy is a society problem. You are not the first person who has been, I mean, I made attempt to solve, I mean, a teenage pregnancy. People have already done what's on that. Let us know what they have done. Do you understand? Let us know what it, that is why we said that, what is the known and what are the unknowns? Give us the knowns and what are the unknowns? The unknowns will not tell us there is a gap. So you see, even though there's been a pregnant, it was a society problem, how are you going to solve it? And that is what you are investigating. Or what is the issue behind? That is the main problem. So this should be a discussion on the research topic as it pertains to a specific study area. So the research problem uh, is an issue usually depicted in the following ways. So before that, let me know that a research problem broadly can be come from uh, three different ways the contextual view, the theoretical view, and the methodological view. The contextual view here is that what is the content? What is the issue at hand? How are people looking at it? And how do you want to look at it? What is the issue in the geographical area? So with the contextual, I mean, each view, people normally emphasize on, let's say, maybe studies have not, limited study have been done. Can, you make, can your work make it a many, plenty or many? Of course, it cannot. So it's not a strong, I mean, research problem. So you stating the contest, you go further and tell her the house, the methodology, if possible, if there's falsification or if there's falsification in the theory, let us know the theory that you think can validate your knowledge or your, your problem statement. So, so these are the very ways. So as a gap between observed and expected situation, very good. Like this sentence, a gap between observed and expected. So there's an issue at hand. We expect this outcome, but this is not what we are getting. Eh? So in economy, we also have something called oh, the actual and the potential. Eh? The actual and the potential. The potential is, I mean, uh, what you expect to achieve, but this is the outcome or this is the actual we have achieved. So let's say we, we don't expect teenage pregnancy to be prevalent in a mama, but this is what we have observed. Teenage pregnancy is an issue. Now you must go further to tell us how we're going to solve that problem. So the observed and expected situation is very important here. An issue that is concerned of to a society. An issue about which very little or uh, scientific knowledge exists. Yes. So you can also get your this. When there is contradictory outcomes or results, that is why the methodology comes. Many people have used different methods and there's misfunding. There's context person saying that this person is finding this, this person is finding that. Then you try to argue from the point that maybe it's because of the kind of method they use. So we are coming with a different methodology to measure. And that is where the methodological gap comes in. Very important. Okay, sources of problem statement. From literature, of course, you must read literature and read and read and read. Statement by policy or expert. Like for example, uh, we saw the e levy, it was a statement they made, and at least it has given an issue of hand. So, what you have identified, so we want to look at that. Observe. Vision. You have also observed something like, for example, uh, now there's people are, uh, you have observed that the youth are involved in self betting, sport betting. You want to know why they are into sport betting and what is the outcome, what the implication on their lives. We, we, we all heard about KNST students when they were stuck and they were linking it to sport betting. So it's something that you have observed, you want to look at it, then it can be a source of your problem. Theoretical principle, I've already mentioned it. There are several existing knowledge to guide your ways. People have come up with theoretical frameworks, theoretical models, but you have realized that there's falsification 
or maybe the kind of theory people are using to, to explain a particular you know, know it's not well presented. So you want to also come with your own principle. So for example, people are amazed about uh, how they call it uh, livelihood resilience among fishers in coastal religion using uh, let's say the livelihood framework uh, or model, theoretical model. But you have said that no, there's a way, there's a need for us to also use a different theoretical framework or perspective to come out with, uh, to solve the issue of, I mean, what do you call it, uh, coastal resilience or coastal livelihood resilience. This is purely theoretical principle. Experience in your field, yes. Researchers, you must be experienced. The more you do research, the more you become experienced in the field. So experience alone can tell you the kind of problem that you do. So sometimes you, someone will bring a word to you, just look at the word without reading the word, but you know the problem. And the person who has been reading, reading, reading several times, but he doesn't know the problem. This is experience. We have been saying that experience man is the best teacher, and it's not a lie. Empirical studies. What people have presented, what people have found, previous studies, what have you identified on that? What do what, what were their suggestions? I always say that why area of identifying problem? I remember I, I got my 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 toy, my research title for my first master in economics from someone who has did a, 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 a thesis in at a department. And do you know why I picked the title? You know, every research, especially the thesis, at the end of the research, they have something you call suggesting for further study or a recommendation, you can get an, a, 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 a research problem there to develop. So I realized that, I mean, people have been doing water, improve water, improve water, improve water. And I look at the data and I look at the statistics and I realize that, ah, people have been measuring improved water on child livelihood, a child health town like diarrhea. But still, the issue of diarrhea keep on increasing. Our children are still suffering from diarrhea due to, I mean, water issues and sanitation issues. Then I have to approach in a different format. So. The person suggests or both, I mean, making water quality at the household level. And I said, wow, then it means I can frame my work, I can frame my research title around what we call household water treatment. And that's how I came about with my research title called Effect of Household Water Treatment on Child and Five Diarrhea in Ghana, evidence from DHS 2014. That was my research title. So you see, you can get a title from uh, previous studies, of course. So empirical study is very important. Real world phenomenon, COVID-19 is a key issue. It has taught us so many lessons. If, it's about, if you're about going the digital, now COVID-19 has taught us a lot of ways, a lesson about how to move digital. So you can get a topic or a research problem from that. Explorative studies. So exploratory study here is that, you know, people have, I mean, explore using qualitative, narrative, other kind of qualitative methods to come up with it. So you want to what, validate that knowledge. You want to validate that. I always say that we do the quantitative data, all the quantitative research came as a result of qualitative data. All the theories or all the theoretical framework we are using today was started by exploratory studies. And people now validated using main uh, uh, models and it became a today. So exploratory study is very important. You can get that. Now, <clears throat> so now let's look at how we formulate a research problem. I, 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 I put this one here to draw your attention on when you're, I mean, I mean, writing a research problem, what you should look up to. So, so uh, we have something we call a uh, four part in formulating a research problem. So the first one is the hook. You know, we all know hook. Who have never heard of hook before? The hook that people use to catch the fish. The fishermen use hook. And you see how they draw their hook into the water? It's very critical. Their experience. So the hook, you must hit the nail. They must make sure that this hook I'm throwing into the water, it must target the fish that I need, or it must target a particular fish, or it must target a fish. I should not draw the, the hook out and it be nothing. And that is why a research problem must focus. You must hit the nail on the ground, the hook. And the hook here is what and why. What, issue the, what is the issue at hand? And why is that issue? And now from there, we go to the second part. What is known? about that issue. 
court is not known about that issue, is a gap in knowledge. Then why is that gap in knowledge critical? Or why the, why the, or the gap is very important, the critical need, the critical need. So when you're developing your public statement, look at these things, see whether you have captured them. Very important, of course. So I have presented as an example of a public statement here that I've highlighted them using different colors. And permit me, I'm very sorry if you cannot see the screen very well, but I'll try to make sure that you follow me with what I'm trying to do. So an example of public statement that I use that, I've used four different colors. I, I don't know colors, of course, so excuse me for that. But we have the first color whereby I said the hook. That's the first color. The second color is the known information. The third color, which is yellow, is the knowledge gap. Then the last color, which is more like a violet, is like uh, uh, called the critical need. So let me read about this, about uh, this, uh, I mean, uh, an information I pick and I want to do that. So for example, we are dealing with virus. So virus are thought to be involved in 15% to 20% of human cancer worldwide. That provided critical tools to review common mechanisms involved in human malignancy. So you can see this the hook. I'm hitting the nail. I'm giving a fact. I'm giving an a meat. I'm giving you a meat to chew. I'm telling you that this is the fact on the ground. Take it and do whatever you want to do. So after seeing this fact, it must move you. It must put some information in your head that, hey, this is a critical issue. Then that is where the second information, what is known about that information? The second one comes. So as the etiology agent of adult T cells, leukematic, human T cells, leukematic virus type, it's just as a virus. ATLV1 encodes a potential tax which regulates important circular paths. So now I'm giving the known information, what is already there. Over the years, tax has proven to be valuable model system, in which to interrogate cellular processes, reviewing pathways and mechanisms that play important roles in cellular information. So I've given the known information here. Now what is not known? That is where the another gap is. What is not known? What is the gap? Although the tax on core protein has been shown to transform cells in culture and to induce primos in a variety of what transgenic mouse model, the mechanism by which task transform is not well understood. I have now given the unknown information here, even though there are a lot of information about task, the mechanism that the tax cells is transformed is not well understood. It's not well presented. Eh? So why, if it is not well presented, why should you be concerned about it? I'm giving another information. A large number of tax mutant have been generated and their biological activity have been thoroughly catalyzed, probably in cell culture system. So why is it important? The critical need comes in. Currently, a major obstacle in the field is that the transforming activity of tax mutant cannot be compared using available transgenic model due to random transgenic integration sites. Viable transgenic copy number and inconsistent transgenic expression level, making it difficult to learn the biological activities of tax mutants with their transformed potential. Excuse me, this is pure science, I pick information, but uh, this, this one is trying to tell us that it's critical because it's not a major obstacle in the field when it talks of transforming activity of tax. Why they go, it cannot be, um, you can't compare a tax mutant using the available transgenic model due to some random, as any integration. So there could be other, uh, what they call, unobserved factors that can influence it. So you must present, do something. It's critical need. And that's why he's saying that the, the, the mechanism by which transform, tax transform cell is, is not well understood. So you see, the hook is there. The hook is given the fact, the exact information. That's what I'm trying to say. You are drawing the hook into the water with some insects. So you are telling the the, the, the hood, uh, uh, the fish to feed it so that it will catch it. So they're giving some information, but to let the person move by the fact that the what we are trying to do that is very important. 15 to 20% of human cancers are, are, I mean, or are involved in viruses. So it, it must be an issue of concern. Thank you. So let's, after that, let's come to the risk of objective. 
So risk objective is, is normally a, 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 a broad statement of purpose. Uh, that is the, we have the risk. It's, all, it's a statement of purpose for the research. It's trying to, it's trying to tell you what you, you, you intend to achieve in the research. Specify the task to be carried out. And that's the activity, that is the deliverable. When you're writing a, a, a grant proposal, the deliverables activities, the research objective will tell the kind of activities you intend to engage yourself. So, so yeah, the research objective will tell you what you want to achieve at the end of the day. Not simple, measurable, relevant. Eh? Relevant. That is it. You can't you can present quantitative method or qualitative method. You said the research objective might be some phrases we use to capture your objectives or what you call the hierarchical phrases of capturing your, your objectives. So one of them is to identify, identify. You can also say to examine. Identify is different from examine. When you say examine, you're moving to a different hierarchy. So the first one to identify is the lowest hierarchy. Examine, you're moving to a different hierarchy. To evaluate, you're moving to another different level of hierarchy. To predict, you are moving to another level, the fourth level of hierarchy. To assess, so 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 all these things analyze. So all these things are telling at the hierarchy. So if I see identify, eh, I must know the kind of methods you are going to use. If you say examine, I must know the kind of method. If you say evaluate, predict, assess, analyze, they are all feeling that. If I see, I can say, oh, this is a, a qualitative research objective. This is a quantitative research objective. I can easily identify based on the phrases that you have used. So now, with the research objective, that's what I mentioned, you must first give us the broad objective or the general objective or the main purpose of the study. And that normally, we normally capture the, the complete sentence of the research title as well. So for example, I'm looking at what? Toward, uh, to, uh, to assess the impact of social protection services and improve fish smoking technology on livelihood of fish. That is my broad or my general objective. With the specifics will not tell us the kind of activity I want to carry. So specifically the objectives or must be guided with issues in a program statement. If it's about food security that you were mentioned about, you must capture food security. If it's about uh, income poverty, you must capture income poverty as the objective. If it's about nutrition quality, you must capture nutrition quality. If it's about gender dynamics in terms of, I mean, uh, uh, potential services, participation, or whatever you want to, you must capture that one. So these are, and you, these are the specific. So, so these are based on the issues and the constraint that you can cover. So, and, and you might arrange them in a very nice using action verb to I do that. So, you can consult people to guide you in that. Okay. So let's still go to the formulation of the objective. So with the formulation of the objective, so we have based on the issue, and as I've mentioned already, there it could be a theoretical principle too. You can use that one to formulate the objective. It can also be experience, also with that. Then the real world phenomenon, all these things. As well as you can use this one to come out with your research objectives. Okay. So I've mentioned that, that objective must be smart. Yes. Why? why when you say smart, what does it mean? It's an it's a, it's a related word, but half a minute. So the smart here means that S stands for simple. It must be simple. You must hit the nail on the ground. It shouldn't be double, but it should be specific. If you're 
dealing with one particular issue, one particular issue, you cannot deal two particular issues in as one as specific. And that's why you call it a S, which is the simple and specific. It must be measurable. It must be measurable in the sense that is a research attainable? How are you going to attain that? How are you going to measure it? You cannot present objective that cannot be measured. Yeah, no, 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 we don't do that in research. It must be achievable. It must be achievable. It must be realistic. Realistic in the sense that we don't state objectives from personal feeling. Today, I read someone's work at the library and I said, no, this is personal feeling. You don't use emotions when you're writing research. No, it must be real. It must be real, irrespective of wherever you come from, either from the sociology, which normally deal with the interpretivism and the quantitativism, you must be real. Just that your reality cannot be objective, but it must be real. So your objective must be real. It must be time bound, if possible. It must be time bound. The geographical area must be specified. You don't leave your specific objective to be broad. No, 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 no. Then it doesn't mean it doesn't make six. It doesn't make six specific objectives. Okay. So this is the mean. That's the meaning of I mean, uh, research. Uh, uh, that is the obvious smart. So let's come to the research question. So based on what you are trying to do, we, you can have a research question or research hypothesis. So let's tackle with the research question. So we draw research question from the objective you have first I mean, specified. So research question normally means that a set of specific questions that you need to ask, which extend the purpose of research. So based on the purpose of the, what are the questions that you want to ask? So that's why I'm saying we draw specific research questions from the objectives of the study. So we must ask an interrogative for statement, we must present interrogative statement on the relationship between some variables, services, and so the potential services and what? Uh, or the income, poverty. What is the question? Does social potential services have effect on that or influences what you call have a relationship with what you call poverty reduction or income or fisher force? Must ask a question. Excuse me, I, I prefer using fisher for fisher force. It seems I'm now much interested in the area, <laughs> Oscar. <laughs> Sort of question about processes of phenomenon. So you must ask those questions to, to, to do that. Research question must be reasoned. It must be drawn from the existing theory or literature. So you see, everything is linked together. And when you understand this, it makes your work very easy. Okay, so let's see how you arrange corresponding with objective, number of bulletin, or you must do, you must arrange them and it, it must be simplest to the complex. You don't start complex to simplest. No, no, no. Start from, if it's about, uh, uh, we must first look at factors that influence Shepherd's adoption of improved fish smoking technology or even uh, social potential service. You must know the factors before you even now know the impact of those adoption on their livelihood outcomes. So we start from simple to the complex. We cannot just go and start from the impact, then you now come to look at factor that influence. No, no. It, it doesn't make any sense. Excuse my language. Uh, uh, so it should have the physiology and, and it must use the word how, when it talks of research question, how, the why, does, what, they are the words that we use, for, especially when it comes to exploratory to elicit little responses. You must use the word, you must avoid using the like ah. Uh, do well is no, no, no. They are not correct phrases to use. And you must also not be using non suggestive statement. Okay. Let's go on the risk. So now let's give us a what you call it, example. That the cost of land increase with distance from the city center. You see, so, so this means that you want to look at uh, what do you call it, the relationship between what, uh, distance from city and cost of land. So now you want to ask a question, whether cost of land increases with distance from the city center. So uh, I, I remember my undergrad time, I did uh, 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 my, 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 my research, what do you call it? my project work on uh, uh, determinants of housing prices using the hedonic pricing method. And 
there are three main characters or factors that determine household rent using the hedonic. So one one is the, the neighborhood characteristics, the, the locational characteristics, and the structural characteristics. So with respect to the, the, the location, distance is very key. Uh, or in the neighborhood, distance is very key. So we have gotten to realize that, I mean, uh, uh, houses that are closer to the center, city center, are normally having high rent compared to, I mean, uh, places that are far. But is that a phenomenon? Nowadays, it seems the phenomenon is, normally when you go to big cities, now the hinterlands are where the, even the cost of house is very expensive because uh, we've gone to uh, Cape Coast here. Kotokrava seems to be the center of Cape Coast. But, you know, uh, I think uh, a price in, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Sipole, Bongos, and it will be very expensive compared to uh, Kotokrava. Meanwhile, Kotokrava is, is the center. So it's an issue of concern that you can, can also signal you to investigate. But on the real note, or on average, you know that you want to know whether distance from city I mean, uh, influence the cost of land. Okay. So, what is the relationship between household income and household solid waste management? It's another two, I mean, research question that you must ask, and it's looking at two variables. You're looking at household income and household solid waste management practice. So, we want to know whether income influence look at. Okay. So, with, with the reset, the uh, question you can also have what you call the research hypothesis. First, normally, uh, if you are, you are you are from the the deductive reasoning approach, or if you are from the positivist approach, the the economists and the quantitative bias people, you, know, you want to uh, uh, do to test to validate an information, or you want to validate uh, a theory principles, you must test hypothesis. So you must use hypothesis as well. So hypothesis you know, simply mean uh, uh, to test. A testable statement that predicts relationship among variables in the study. Hello, Oscar. Hello, Oscar. Yeah, Aubrey. Uh, the, the, the pig is quiet. Hello. Hello, I'm here. Okay. Okay, so I, I wanted to know whether you people are with me. The page is quiet. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. with you. I'm... Okay, okay, thank you. That's good. Okay, so let's continue. So that is basically the mean of hypothesis. So it's a testable statement that predicts relationship between uh, or among variables. So if you want to test, if you want to test, you must you know, hypothesize your objective. And before we go that, I must emphasize that we have level of hypothesis. Apart from the fact that we have type of hypothesis, the two type, type one error and type two error, that one is, is an issue of concern or another topic of issue of concern. We also have what we call level of hypothesis. We have what we call the, the, the relationship, I mean, hypothesis. We have what we call the directional hypothesis. That's the second level. We have the third level called the magnitude estimate hypothesis. Then the last one, we have what we call the counter or the counter factor hypothesis. So let's talk about the first one. The relationship, normally you want to just look at whether there's an association between two, uh, two variables. So you want to look at whether there's a relationship between household income or, and, 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 or and that of what, let's say, solid waste management practice. So you want to test to know whether there's a relationship. The second one is the direct relationship. If there's a relationship, what kind of relationship is it? Is it positive relationship? Is it negative relationship? We want to know. And we have the third one. Oh, the third one is where I will advise, especially I don't know the, the kind of participant we are dealing with here, but if you are here, then you are a master student. I will emphasize that, that forget about the first level of hypothesis, the second level of hypothesis, and we are must settle on the third level. Why the third level? Because masters, you are contributing to knowledge. Unlike the undergrad, I'm not saying that undergrad don't contribute to knowledge, but Masters, we are contributing to knowledge. PhD, you are contributing to knowledge. So here, yeah, you must the, the, the policy maker will move by the magnitude, the effect. Do you understand the magnitude or the effect between two valves? So, Prof. Nim normally advises us that 
as a master student, she doesn't want you to be looking at relationship and so what? Directional relationship and so what? Yes, we know there's a relationship between waste management and that of what? Income household and uh, household income and waste management part. There's a relationship, yeah, we know. We know there's a relationship, it could be negative, it could be positive, you know, but you, the policy maker will move or will take a decision or will take your work seal or the policy maker will take an action when you tell the, the magnitude of the, 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 the relationship. If you say that, okay, if, if you're able to increase household income by this amount, this is how we are going to reduce, or this is the extent you're going to reduce waste management, or this is how it's going to trigger into waste management practice by this percent. So the person making is, wow, it means I must, make, I must put some measures to make sure that household income increase so that we can also solve the problem of waste management. So you see, so, and the fourth one is the counter factor. The counter factor here is like, you know, uh, you move away from the, the reality to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to investigate the kind the odd, uh, you people are making noise, to investigate what have not been considered before. So in economics, we have something we call the heterogeneity factors, the unobserved factors. People are saying that the higher you go in education, eh, the larger salary you get. Is that the fact? No, if there's no, if there's another, there are some factors that we have not looked at. Maybe we have not taken into consideration experience. Maybe we have not looking at the skills that the person is also having. It's not just like you school is school is school is soon that will bring you the, the, the larger income. But maybe there are some factors that you must talk of. The experience in the workforce can also let someone earn a higher salary. So this is where the counter factor comes. So that's so we must take it into consideration. So the counter factor is very important. So uh, we are looking at uh, teenage pregnancy. Eh? So people have been looking at teenage pregnancy and it effect and using different variables, but you are, they have not looked at it. For example, you are looking at what household water, uh, uh, improved water source and uh, children diarrhea. So WHO has come out with some criteria of, I mean, saying that this water is improved, this water is un un unimproved, but they have never taken into consideration distance to the water source. The WHO have never taken into consideration distance to the water source. So even though the water, they can provide a water source to a normal community, but the distance to the water source can make someone with that not improved. Why? Because someone, let's say I'm here, then the water is located at a normal community, let's say a normal palace, and the water is improved at the source. But because the distance to my water and my household is very far, by the time I get to the point of view, the water can be contaminated. But the WHO didn't take this one into consideration. So this is counterfactual. We are moving away from the reality to hit some of the things that you must you have never considered before. So we have what we call unobserved heterogeneity. And it's very important. So we can have some, we can use some uh, estimated techniques to solve something, uh, and the United issues and those stuff, yeah. Or we can use what we call SEM, and that is why now the people are now emphasized on the, 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 the importance of structural equation modeling. Why? Uh, uh, structural equation modeling has let us know the very pathways of outcome. But if you're using just a simple, a traditional, a conventional, estimation technique like linear regression, like let's say logistic or profit model, you might not, you might not be able to establish the pathways, but structure equation model will help let us know the various pathways of the issue at hand. And the policy maker will say, wow, then I should take this one serious, 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 wow. So you see, that is where the counter factor comes in. So as an Enfield student, you might ever start on the, le the third level hypothesis and the fourth level hypothesis. Okay, so I've already explained the hypothesis. It's a declared statement indicating a predictive relationship between two variables or maybe more than two variables which can be tested. So you can even do interaction, mediate, you can do mediation, you can do moderating analysis. 
That's it. So the hypothesis, why hypothesis? Hypothesis guides you whilst you are doing a research. When you have your objective and you hypothesize your objective, it is giving you a guide. Let me go this way. It will not let you deviate from what you are trying to do. Okay. For example, if you want to look at Twitter for seven and food security, it is going to guide you. Because at the end of the day, you want to know the relationship between social protection services and food security. Okay. When to use hypothesis? It's not that when you just wake up, you use hypothesis. No, no, no. We use hypothesis when there is the need to use. And these are the important. So the objective must then it uh, determine whether to use hypothesis or a research question. And not all research objectives require hypothesis. Yes, not all objectives. If you're not testing association, you're not testing relationship, you're not looking at, uh, uh, you're not wanting to establish a relationship between the association, you don't need to do hypothesis here. So if the objective comprise two variables, which suggest relationship, then you must establish hypothesis. If the objective also compares two groups, you must establish. For example, we're looking at people who have adapt and people who have not adapt. You're comparing two things. So we have I didn't know take a protest. So it is used in quantitative methods, like those in economics and other fields who emphasize on what quantitative methods. Yes. If you are dealing with quantitative issues like cut attendance and improve an improvement of performance, then you must establish a hypothesis. It's a first step towards research. Criteria for formulating hypothesis. Any form, but not in a question. Yes, I like that. So, you know, there is a question was in the question form. But when it, to, when it comes to hypothesis, it shouldn't be in a question form, but it should be any format, but it shouldn't be in a question form. It should be empirical testable. Though, so you might establish, I mean, the, the, the right and the wrong. That's why you have what we call uh, the non hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. You must let us know what is the what is the, the, the right thing and what you want to achieve, the wrong and the wrong. You must give us a clear, specific, and a precise. And it should not be contradictory statement. It shouldn't be double bearing. That's why I emphasize that if the objective is double bearing, your hypothesis is going to be double bearing. And I don't know, the, uh, it will be very difficult for someone to know exactly what you're trying to look at. So don't give a double bearing research hypothesis. Good behaviors in class will lead to a bad performance. Yes, that's an example. Should describe the relationship between. So we are looking at bad performance and we're looking at behavior. So good behaviors in class will lead to bad performance. This is a, 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 a hypothesis that you want to test. And I don't think you must validate this, I mean, statement to see whether you are accepting it or rejecting it. And that is why the, the now and the alternative hypothesis come in. Okay. So you should describe one, uh, one, uh, uh, this one relationship at a time. You should not use, I mean, different, different relationships unless you are trying to do what you call uh, an interaction or you are doing a part two effect, something that you're going to look at. So a good study habit will lead to good grades. And also, another one that you can do. I don't know that you want to take that. How do you generate hypotheses? So, we generate hypotheses using the deductive approach. That's why I mentioned that. So, we have the deductive reasoning and the inductive reasoning. So, the deductive reasoning is where we draw a hypothesis. We draw a hypothesis based on the existing knowledge. That is why we, the, the quantitative knowledge, you have to call theory. The theoretical principle has a lot here. So you must use existing theories. And that's why we call it the, the deductive approach. So for example, you are using a theory like human capital theory, livelihood framework. Yeah. You are using a theory like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, technology adoption model. These are existing theory you are using to, to, to work. So you are investigating and you are investment in higher Education lead to higher income. What theory is guiding you? Capital, human capital theory is guiding you here. So at the end of the day, you're going to validate this theory. And that's why at the end of the day, you must make sure whether you are accepting the, the recent hypothesis, which is the alternative, or you are rejecting it. 
Okay. So you also, you also have another thing called the social policy and, for example, school feeding program. School feeding program, providing free meal at schools will increase school enrollment. You are drawing your knowledge from social policy theory. So I don't know, you must see whether it's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah emphasizing on that. So you can also draw or, I mean, generate your hypothesis using existing studies. So, and if you have study you have read and it motivates you, then you can also, based on that knowledge, so you can get following, so, 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 and so, following Oscar and Bashir 2016, you are using this theoretical model, and this theoretical model is hiding something. So in, in the literature review, you must have something you call the hypothesis development. The hypothesis development. The hypothesis development will learn from the theory. You must link the theory to the hypothesis development before you can be able to present your hypothesis. So it's a, a very innovative way of presenting a case to let us know that you do not just draw your hypothesis from anyhow, but you drew your hypothesis from a simony, from a simple existing knowledge, not personal feelings that you use to hypothesize your decision. Okay, so we can also use what we call intuition. So the intuition is here, yeah, we, we, we normally use what we call the inductive hypothesis. That is where the qualitative, or not even not the qualitative, you're trying to explore something further. You're trying to look at counterfactors, you understand? So you're trying to look at further to, to, to validate some information. So put people into prostitution. This intuition, this intuition. So you want to hypothesize. So, so you say, what creation will lead to eradication of prostitution? Yes, it's an intuition. Yeah, that so you, you are trying to establish. So I think that you must validate that to see whether the, the, your inductive reading. So this inductive reading here is that you are, it's, 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 it is coming from your own experience and knowledge that you want to establish whether there is a path or not. Okay. <clears throat> so this one does not necessarily draw inspiration from the theory, but based on common sense, based on what is common sense, what is justifiable, a knowledge that is justifiable. So commonly held beliefs. So for them, women are good cooks, uh, 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 women uh, are good cooks. So I want to say, employ a female cook will improve the quality of milk. Is it true? At the end of the day, you must see whether that belief was or not. Because there's a belief that women they cook very well, but maybe you end up in reality to know that women don't cook well. Some men cook very well. Yeah, so that is intuition. Okay, so <clears throat> types of hypothesis. So, so as I've mentioned, we have two. We have the now hypothesis. So that normally given. I I I would say that the, the given hypothesis. Why is it given hypothesis? Because it is always the known. It does not show any difference. It is the same thing as what is already known. So a teenage pregnancy and school dropout. There's no that is the 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 the, the, the given. It is given. So you are trying to say that no, there is a significant difference. Yes. So you have to validate that. So the now is the given. And the alternative is what I normally call it the research hypothesis itself. So testing should lead to a certain origination. So either you fail to accept or you accept. We don't, re we don't reject nine hypotheses. So either you accept or you fail to accept. Hmm? That is it. So class attendance does not improve students. At the end of the day, you must see whether you're accepting it or we are, I mean, failing to accept it. Or you know what normally people call it, we are rejecting it. Uh, so it is useful in testing the significance of the difference. So based on this given one, it was giving you a kind of uh, uh, a bench match for you to now compare your research hypothesis to the bench match. So the now hypothesis is the bench match you are going to use your hypothesis to compare. So the alternative hypothesis is what I said. It is called the research hypothesis. And this is the opposite of the noun. So when the noun is saying there is no, the, this one is saying that there is. So it's still the opposite side. 
So for example, class attendant improves. When the night is in it, the class attendant does not improve. This one is saying that it improves. So in the end of the day, you must see whether you're going to validate this money or you're not going to validate this money. Okay, so failing to reject an I hypothesis is not necessarily an acceptance of the theory. Hypothesis. Very good. I like this. And that's why the type one and 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 type two error comes in. And you must pay critical attention when it comes to type one and type two error. What do you say when you say type one? For example, let me give, I normally use simple analogy to, for people to understand type one error. So let's say uh, someone is woof, 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 woof. You all run out to go there. You got there, then there's no woof. So he has forced us to accept the truth, which is not real. That is type one hypothesis. So when you force to accept I want to call it, uh, uh, when you're forced to accept some research hypothesis, which doesn't mean you're making type one error. Then a type two error, why? Type two error is that, like, the person is saying woof, 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 and no one responded. No one didn't go out. And indeed, there was a woof. That is type two error. So we fail to accept the truth. So instead of accepting what is true, we didn't accept that. So that is high, type two hypothesis. And you must pay critical attention. And that is why this statement is trying to say that failing to reject a nine hypothesis is not necessarily an acceptance of the truth. Yes. So the null and alternative um, together must capture some possibilities. So it is the null that is tested, though we expect what is stated in the alternative. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Yes, so you it is the now that is tested because the now is saying that there's no difference. And you are saying that I'm going to test to see the difference. So you are giving some kind of confidence in the level. So you say, okay, I'm going to give myself a confidence in level of 95%. And I'm going to make an error of 5%. So my significant level should be 5%, zero point zero five. I don't know the, is your people that determine whether indeed you are accepting the now or you are not accepting the now. So we don't just accept because we are accepting it. There should be some possibilities. And that is why the significant levels come in. Hmm? Yes, function of hypothesis, function of hypothesis. So it guides, especially when it comes to social research, it guides direction. It gives the structure, it operationalizes the work for the researcher. Eh? It offers temporary answers to the research question. Yes. So even though uh, I, 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 I was telling a guy today, uh, he's a PhD candidate, but why I'm reading the program, uh, that for we the quantitative method, we already know how we, we already have our answers on our hand, just that we have not uh, gotten the answers yet. Why? Why, must, why did I say that? Because we, we, we have. I've stated my hypothesis and I must present my what I call the APRA expected results from the literature, what people have done. I must expect, okay, I'm expecting positive relationship here. I'm expecting negative relationship here. Yeah, that the, all that I don't know is the effect. So you see, so yeah, it provides temporary answers to the recent question. But for you, there is a, for someone who is dealing with qualitative, does not have the answers because he does not have an existing knowledge that he draw inspiration from. He is dealing with inductive approach, but we are dealing with deductive. We have drawn some inspiration from some point. So we can present what we want to do, even though we are not there yet. Thank you. So the, the hypothesis sensitizes the researcher to a certain aspect of the situation which are relevant. The hypothesis will tell you that this place is very important that you have to keep it. So you see, in, 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 someone asks, so what are your key variables of interest? And you're confused. You don't know because you, you don't know your hypothesis. But if you know your hypothesis, if you know that I want to look at social protection services and school security, these are my key aspects. These are my variables. These are my relevant variables. I'm looking at 
and then they want to establish a fraud within this. Eh? So, so hypothesis, they are not end in themselves by me, at which the researcher can understand with greater clarity this problem and um, so you see, not just even though we are given some expected uh presentation, we don't I mean force, I mean that there's now people are now trying to force what we call a, 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 a hypothesis results. No, no, no. So you see, people are now falsifying resource. So there's another quick coming on board that people call, we call it reproducibility in scientific research. If you are submitting a paper for publication, they will handle your protocols very well because their reproducibility is very critical. They want to know whether you didn't falsify a resource. So reproducibility is a very You must make sure if someone wants to replicate your work, is able to reproduce or replicate it. That is it. So I, I, I had the opportunity to have a workshop on reproducibility in scientific research, and I learned a lot. And now there, there are so many software that we can use to do reproducibility, especially when it comes to our, we have something called our markdown, it to present them. Hmm? Research question and hypothesis. So research question. So they are very interrogative statement, as I've mentioned earlier, and they are normally used in common uh, qualitative studies. Uh, they are not necessarily describing relationship. Yes, of course. But when you come to hypothesis, they are declarative statements that you need to establish. They are qualitative studies. They are normally used in quantitative studies, and they want to establish relationships or they want to do what you do comparison between two variables or more. So that is the meaning. Now let's go to Rashna. What's the time now? We now have presented, so we still have some time. If you have a question, let me know. It seems I'm just writing on, writing on, writing on, writing on, writing on. Uh, uh, you can, you can, you can. Hello. Ah, you can go on. There isn't any issue. Okay, 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 okay. That's good. That's good. Okay. So now, now having established your objective, your research question, or your hypothesis, you must tell the rationale. You must for the study. So when you say rationale, the speaking, what does it entail? Adding to knowledge. Of course, this is where the originality of the work comes in. This is where the originality of the work comes in. Why should people, I mean, pick your big work and do something about that work? That is, how is the kind of knowledge? Is it contributing to knowledge? What is the novelty aspect of the work? And what is, what is the work going to do in terms of policy implication, in terms of academic contribution? Hmm? So you see, adding to knowledge, what will be the policy implication of the study? What are the important in terms of the area, the locality, the geographical context, the organizations, if it's about nation, if it's about knowledge base, what is your way going to add to that? Hmm? That is basically the rationale. Okay. So note. Uh, you must insist on this uh, 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 something. You must you must insist on like let's say some assessors insist on this. Others consider them as optional. So, so for example, uh, you must use those terms. But others to not I mean take them serious. No? Okay, but let's look at them seriously. The delimitation or the scope of the study. I've mentioned it. I mean at the beginning that that. As a researcher, you know, you can't cover everything. Eh? You can't cover everything. In a country, you call it you cannot do everything. So you must let us, you must define your scope. You must define your scope. You must let us know the, how your work covers or to what extent. So issues to be covered in the work, the depth of coverage. 
is very important when it comes to research, and that is defined the delimitation or the scope. So we have what we call the geographical location. Define the context, the study context. Is it an industry? Let us know the kind of industry. If it's about sector, eh? Even if it's about geographical, let us know the kind of geographical area dealing with. It can be Ghana, but what aspect are you looking at? Is it coastal? Is it savannah? Is it, I mean, the, the, the northern belt? You know, we have the ecological zones. Yeah? We have ecological zones. And we have the vegetation zones. And we all have the, we have the region, the administrative region. Now we have system administrative region. Yeah? That, that, if it's about national, let us know the kind of country. If it's about region, let us know the, the kind of region you're dealing with. Is it Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, Eastern Africa, Northern Africa, Northern America, Eastern America? Let us know the region, the important. The methodology, the methodology, let us know. Let us know the methodology that you're using. It. Is it mismeted approach? Is it uh, mono approach? Uh, quantitative or qualitative approach. If it is quantitative approach, what kind of methods are you going to use? Let us know the methodological steps that you have covered or that your works covered. Eh? The respondent, the respondent, the participant, let us know the kind of people you are dealing with. It's very important. So if you do this, thing, it defines the work. It gives the scope of the work. It means you are not going beyond the work. So the person will know, okay, this person did, this person do this, this person do this, this person do this. Okay, that's good. We know this them already. Limitation. People normally state weaknesses and, and they normally focus on the money, 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 money. Please, even though financial could be the weakness, it's not a key limitation in research. Hmm? So the challenges and how you can overcome them in terms of data collection is very key. In terms of the methodology, you must emphasize these things. Very important. Very important. Thank you. Okay. As for the organization of the study, we know them. I said there are five tasks. So, uh, especially when you come to uh, UCC, and within the uh, uh, the chapter, we highlighted each of the chapters. So we have the chapter one. I've already mentioned. I'm just going to highlight them. So we have the background, the problem, the objective, the, the question of the hypothesis, and sometimes. You can add the significance or the justification. This is optional. Then the, or, uh, you can also add the organization. Then you go to the chapter two, the theoretical, the conceptual issues, the empirical issues yeah, must be, I mean, must be, I mean, separated. Especially when it's PAD, you must go more than that. Mm? You must present in chapters. So if it's PAD, each objective can even have an empirical chapter. Literature review of that. Wow, that is great. So, we have the methodology and the discussion. So, and the, the, the next one, which is the chapter four, we have the, the analysis, the results, the discussion, and the last one, which looks like the summary, conclusion, and the recommendation. So this is how your work should be organized. So example one, the people of uh, Takrum have the Densu River pass through their town. This river is the only source of drinking water. According to the Ministry of Health, the water is polluted. I know unwholesome, but the chiefs and the people insist that the water has always been like that, and its color has nothing to do with pollution. So use this one, you can use to highlight a problem statement, you can formulate a problem statement, you can set objective, you can set your hypothesis, then you can do a literature review, then you set your objective, uh, your methodology, then the kind of method you're going to use to achieve your results, then after that you present your results, but then you give the conclusion of it as it. So we have another example here too, same thing. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's look at the general, I, I, I want us to, uh, I want to pause it when it is, uh, I don't know whether you are here, so that maybe you can pause another time. So that I have to, I have not break my fast yet, and, and, and also to pray. Okay, okay, so okay. I will... you, you, hello? Okay. Hello? Hello, yeah, Oscar. Yeah, hello. Do you, want, do, do you want me to break you so that I'll take it from here? Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe you can you can take it from here so that I can, I can, I can also take a little bit. I'm very grateful. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.
thank you so much. Uh, we are really, you know, tapping tonight from Mr. Idrusu Salifu. And I'm taking it back from where he left us. That's the general hint on doing research. So these are so, uh, Oscar, 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 yeah. should, should I should I should I project or you project from your end? <laughs> okay, let me see. Where you, you want to go and have it, so let me project. Okay, then let me stop sharing. My end. Let me share my page, my screen or whatever. Where is it? Okay. Okay, let me let me share my screen. Let me see where he go to so that we mm, okay. Uh, on general hints. Okay. Hello. Hey. Uh, Wow. Okay, so general hint there should be somewhere for me to project this thing from where I am. I should be able to project view. Do we have present slideshow? Okay, so let me not now. Okay, from current slide, yeah. Okay, so as I have already indicated, I'm taking it from where he left us with. Oh, sorry. Then I had okay, so. These are just general hints that we need to know when we when 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 we come to or when you are dealing with research or when you are doing research. Okay, let me switch my fan so that you didn't hear any noise at the back. So when we talk about general hint one, we are looking at time management. There is the need for you to balance your work, the family, and the research you are doing. And this, this this has to do with students or researchers who are also workers. And even if you are not a worker and you are, you know, full time student, there is the need for you to learn how to manage your time well, so that you'll be able to balance your academic work with the research work that you are doing, as well as your family and other matters. Then don't wait for a chunk of time. As I said, you need to the research is a daily activity. It's a day to day activity that you need to do. Sometimes if you are on a, you are back on a certain project or you are doing a certain research and you put it down for a long period of time, you might even uh, forget the theories and other things and pinning your study. So it's very important that whenever you are on a certain project, as time goes on, at least a week or three days, you have to be on the work so that you can at least do bit by bit by the time you realize you are almost done with the work. Then you said, I find your most productive time. So normally, if we're a student or if we're a worker, you may decide if maybe I should, you know, wake up in the dawn that my my, my children or the families are, you know, asleep, so that I can really have some time, good time to read. Or is it that in the evening that I will have, you have to decide the time that you can really have productive time to read, even in, even if it is thirty minutes or one hour, and you think. You can really have your time to read. It's fine. It's cool. Then know yourself. As I said, there are some people that can even use 30 minutes to do something. Some people that can use one hour to do something. Some of us, to, we need to sit for like four hours to seven hours before we can really get, can read and know that, oh, at least I'm not getting certain things that I really want to get. So you have to know yourself and it will guide you by preparing your own schedule and following it is a good way then at time you need to reward yourself mm -hmm. let's say you set a target for yourself by 
week by next month that should be done by this and that. If you're able to do it, you do you need to you know get yourself some drinks or anything just to you know motivate the system. So these are some of the things that we need to you know observe. General hint. Say so read tirelessly and broad in your topic area. Here you need to download as many as you know literature that you can get, especially with the periodicals and those published articles. If you have you know a chunk of them, you have to read more about the area so that when you are done with it and say that, oh, I've done something about water access, I've done something about child labor, I've done something about conflict. When anyone raises theory, any concept in that area, at least you are abreast with it, you know what you are doing. At least you can say something about it. That's where people will get to know that, oh, okay, this person is into this area, this person is into this area of research. So please address yourself with the area that you are, you know, researching into. It's very important. Then form writing groups, if possible, you know. And this one I, I, I always commend Dr. Aziz and Co. At least some point in time, you can form your research group that know like if you have an issue or they can help you out but normally in africa and ghana normally when you are conducting your research at a master's level and a phd even you are on your own that uh, you need to do a really bad thing even if you are on your own you can still seek assistance from other people that you think you are having no some really a, a, a similar characteristics with them <laughs> Okay, don't leave writing your okay set time plan. We have talked about this one and follow. So the next session we are looking at it and we are believing God and we are you know crossing the time. It's now 7 30. So we have one hour to you know do with it and I pray we will be able to even exhaust the okay. I will advise you that you put your camera off. Okay. So that you can get enough, you can get enough bandwidth. Okay. Okay, thank you for that. So we are moving into the leisure review. When you talk about the leisure review, what are we talking about? What, what is it about? And the leisure review is very broad. And the leisure review, to some extent, some people know, refer it to as the heart of the research. It's very key, and even to the to the it's the heart of the research to the extent that even if before you start your research, you need to review literatures, review literature, read what is there, what has people even done in that field, what is the argument, what is the discourse ongoing. You need to read to address yourself with all these issues, so that you'll be able to even identify the gap. And mathematically, I always say that the gap is what is done manual, the undone. So when you read to get to know what is done, then you'll be able to know where that people have not touched. Then you move to that area. So leisure review is very key. So we will go to, uh, into leisure review and look at those sessions and other issues regarding to leisure review. As I say, leisure review it refers to a thorough review of published and unpublished materials covering the concept and the variable under investigation. Yeah, what we are saying there is a thorough review. It's not just you know, reading one or two articles, but it's thorough. You read a number of published and unpublished materials, and you'll get to know those materials that we can read. So the purpose of literature review, what is it that we have to even do a literature review, or what is so important about reviewing literature? One, to gain understanding of the research problem. You are conducting something about maybe child labor, conflict. What is the ongoing discourse? What do you understand by conflict? What are the theories behind conflict? What are the theories behind the conflict resolution? You need to read, you need to you know, review literature story so that you address yourself with all these issues. And they're even for you to understand the problem that you are even you know, conducting the study to solve. It is out of the literature that you read, then you get all these things done. 
then to identify appropriate theoretical framework, as I said, when you review literatures, at least you view about 10, 20 articles, you get to know that there are some articles, uh, there are some theories that keep on, you know, surfacing in almost every article or the material that you read. Or you may see that, oh, some theories are dom dominant. Then you see that, oh, okay, then let me read more about this theory. Then after you read about that theory, you are convinced that, oh, then I should be able to apply this theory to my work. So here, the literature review has assisted you in identifying the appropriate theoretical framework for your study. Then another essence or the purpose of literature review to assist the formulation of the relevant questions. Here, the relevant question can also be like the recent objective. Because until you read literature, you wouldn't know the gap. And then when you get a gap, then you dip into it. Then you get a research problem, and out of the research problem, that you end your research questions. Then identify appropriate methods and materials as uh, our, our you know, speaker, the first speaker, talk about methods and material, how they are being used in the science and the social sciences, and what have you. But here, what we are talking about is that when you read the churches, Similar to how you got the theoretical framework, you will also be able to identify the appropriate methods and material. For instance, as you review lectures concerning conflict resolutions, at least you review lectures on the uh, Nukunya and those you know, professors and other people that, that are giants in, 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 in conflict when it comes to conflict. Like go to the UGC, you have the School of Development uh, Studies. That's where they, they, they do research concerning development and conflict issues and other related matters. So if you go there, you get those professors who are those interested in that area. You read the articles or you read any you know well-published articles or review journals, then you go through it, peer review journals, you go through it at least. By reading five, ten articles, you get to know that oh, most of them, when you're talking about the methods and material, what tools, how did they arrive there? The, the solutions, how did they arrive, the finding that they arrived, how did they even conduct the study? It's about when you review all these literatures, then you get to know that oh, okay, to conduct research on conflict resolution, this is the way. At least you need to employ this tool, you need to employ that tool, you need to go by this approach and you need to pass here and you know enter this place. So upon reviewing literatures about what people have done and how they did it, then you'll be able to you know come up with the appropriate method for your study. Then also to identify appropriate data collection method. It's similar to the method that we are still on it. Because when you review about 10 or 15 articles, you get to know that oh. Most of them are using focus group discussion. Most of them are using interview guide. Most of them are using questionnaire. Why? When they use questionnaire, what were the problems? What were the things that they were encountered? How did they even analyze the data? You go through it. Oh, am I similar to, am I even familiar to the method that they employ? If you're not familiar with it and you want to learn, you learn. And you think, okay, I'm not familiar with it. Maybe I can use another approach or another data collection method and come up with a similar findings, then you employ it. So all these things is out of the literature review that you review and you get all this information. Then same thing goes to the analytical techniques. Because when the person picks a certain method and a certain approach and a certain data collection tool, it will also feed into the data analytical techniques to employ. And it's an art of the literature that you review that you will get or you come out with the appropriate analytical techniques. The key word here is appropriate because you may have different analytical techniques and you may use them anyhow. And it might not be appropriate, but when you review literatures, when you read what people have done, then you get to know where uh, appropriate analytical techniques to employ for your study. Before we go to uh, the literature review and other things, what I want to add 
to the literature review is that it will also help you to situate the work after the data analysis. After you have analyzed your data, you find out that maybe conflict resolution, maybe negotiation, arbitration, and that thing, these are the you know, approaches that we use to do this and that. And so what? How do you compare your result with others? How do you situate your work into context? So this is where you need to do a thorough nature review. So if you have done a good nature review, it will help you to be able to situate your work and to be able to, you know, discuss your work relating to what other people have done. So that is the essence of nature review. It will help you to do all these things. Without a thorough nature review, you get to this stage, you see that results and discussion, people will be stuck because you wouldn't get anything to discuss. So these are some of the reason why or the purpose of conducting a literature review. Then we can also say that it will also help, you know, it also help for you to understand the current issues relating to the topic under discussion or under study. That is what literature review also help. And it also help you to, you know, contribute to the subjects, issues, variable or contextualize your findings. As you are saying, after you define a certain concept, maybe Oscar defined conflict as blah, 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 or have defined conflict as blah, 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 blah. After defining one or two or three authors or researchers, then what are you also saying about conflict? So about reading them, you get to know what are the similarities? What is the issues about? What is it all about conflict? Then you'll be able to also comment. So without reviewing literature, all these things will not be done. So with the leisure review, before you can review and you know read on leisure, you have the five C's of leisure review. So what we are saying here is that you cite, when you say cite, we are looking at focus on pertinent literature. Here you need to, you write what you call attributedly because you are not epitome of knowledge. Definitely you may quote somebody, definitely you may compare or you may gather data or collect a certain information from a certain article or what have you. You need to cite it. You need to refer, you need to acknowledge that person. It's very key when you are writing or you are reviewing literature, you have to acknowledge the person you are getting such information from. It's key. Then we have what we call the compare. You know, student, it's not about just going to cut and paste, copy and paste. No. When you are getting to the higher level, doing your master's, you are doing your PhD, you are doing a serious research. And now because of the fact that almost all the tertiaries, most of the tertiaries are now using the you know similarity index or plagiarism software. So after your study, if you do copy and paste, you will have issues here. So you have to learn the right way so that you don't have any issue with plagiarism. And these are the things that it will save you from you know plagiarism issues. So you compare here you the, the what we are talking about, the arguments, theories, met methodologies, and findings. What did they found? What theory are they looking at? Maybe you have two or three theories that you have reviewed and you found that maybe they are similar or many people have used it in their work. How do you differentiate this theory from the other one? What is the argument? What is the core argument? You need to compare those theories. You need to compare those concepts, those definitions, and come up with your own. Then you look at contrast. Where is the difference? After we compare them, you'll be able to identify, oh, maybe this one defined conflict as this. The other one defined conflict as that. Okay, so this one look at this perspective. This one look at this issue, this area. Okay, me, I'm targeting individuals. This person was targeting groups. So what is the difference? What is the contrast? Where did they disagree? Then you look at it. Then we move on to the critique. At the higher level, as I said, you don't just copy and paste. After reading them, comparing and contrast, what can you say? 
what arguments are more persuasive? So after comparing the two, which one do you pick? And why are you picking this one definition or this theory and not that? You need to criticize. You need to criticize it, say something about it, especially the methodology. Why is that this method is valid? Why is that you are picking this design and not that? What, what are the weakness of this design? What is the strength of this design that you are picking? What is the strength of this approach or philosophy? Why not this data collection instrument? By that, you need to justify and need to critique about it. So by so doing, then you know that you are doing really justice to the literature review. Then you connect the literature to your research. You know, that's where you put it into context. Maybe uh, Nukunya uh, uh, defined conflict to be that the disagreement between the individual, blah, blah, blah. And also, we have defined conflict to be blah, 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 blah. blah. Godfrey has defined conflict to be as this, this, this. Okay, what do you also see about conflict? What can you also talk about conflict? And in your work, what do you mean by conflict? So here you are putting your work into context. You are connecting what people have already said in their literature to your work. So you are linking up so that anyone reading your work will follow this sequence. So it shouldn't just be copy and paste, but these are the very five C's that you need to you know and show in your literature review, and it's going to do a whole lot of things to help you. So in doing the literature review, these are some of the questions that you need to ask yourself. Any information you are picking, you ask. This information is from who? What is it about? Where was it done? When was it done? Why? And how was it done? So when you're able to answer yourself about these few questions, then you'll be able to you know, do a proper justice to your literature review. For instance, sometimes you do something, when you mention, like Professor Edukwesi, people know that, hey, this man is into statistics, this man is into this. When you mention Professor Osabo, you know, oh, this one is maybe into maybe demography to this. He has done a whole lot about HIV, he has done a whole lot of, so, the mention, the name of the author, the, the researcher that comes to mind, people know that, oh, this person is known for this. So who, and it's very key, who is the information coming from? Then what, what was it about? The research, the literature review that you have, you have reviewed, what, what was it about? And where was it done? Sometimes that's where you have the issue with the contextualization. Maybe a research has been carried out in Togo, they have a different setting, they have a different culture and other things. You want to use the same research in Ghana. You need to understand the differences. You need to appreciate the geographical differences and other things that might have, that may have influence on your research. Then when was it done? There are some information, as we are saying, knowledge also changes with time. Because the available knowledge that we have today might be far from what our forefathers had. And that also influenced our decision that we make from day to day. And why was that study conducted? Why was it so significant at that time? Because last year people were, people were publishing all about COVID. So why? So because of the agent of the situation, of that pandemic. And how did they even conduct it? You look at all these issues. So when you ask yourself all these questions and you try to find solution to this, and you are criticizing what is already you know, found in the literature. And it means that you are doing yourself you know, a good. We are looking at sources of materials for literature. We asked me to say that it's a thorough review of published and unpublished you know, materials. So we are looking at the sources where, what are the repositories of literature review? We can find literature review or we can review literature through books through articles in general, those that's where we have the published and unpublished journals, and what have you. Then we have those online referred journals. Then we have the, what do you call it, the periodicals, those that come in the three months, those come in the you know, quarterly, then those who come monthly and other things. They are all there. Then we have reports. Then we have newspaper. We have other internet sources. So it, when I look at these things, it's only online and the book are the material ones. Then you can even have audios, you can even have videos. 
people can watch television and they can have information from it or review certain things from what they have watched. Some people can listen to radio, can listen to certain audios, can listen to certain you know documentaries and watch them. And at the end of the day, you'll be able to review information from it. So these are all repositories that you can you know review literature from. So it's not only through books and it's not only through published articles. There are some journals that are not published. There are master's thesis, there are undergrad thesis that are there, that they have some valuable information you can review information from. You can go there and read. There are some books at the library you can review information from. There are ebooks too online that you can also you know download and review information from it. So these are all some of the sources that you can review later from. Hello. Are you talking to us? Okay, let's move on. Here yeah, we are talking about leisure review. What, where it should cover, or the the scope of the leisure review. Mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, what you are at? The laser Yeah, hello. Please mute yourself, eh? No, no. Okay, let's move on. So here, someone will ask. Like I, I just last week, someone was asking me, how many pages should I even have for literature review? What should I even cover? In, uh, what should I cover even in the literature review? Here, what we are saying is that you must review to cover all the major variables and the concept in the title, and not just the concept in the uh, title. You have to also make sure that you review on all your research objectives because at the end of the day you are going to discuss based on your research objectives so if you have five research objectives make sure that all these five uh, objectives information concerning them the relation between them is being captured in your later review the the metro variables the key variables in your research make sure you capture them that is why in ugc they call it a, 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 a relevant literature review. It's not that you are just reviewing literature. So you talk about conflict and your work is looking at conflict resolutions. And now you'll be looking at causes of conflict, root causes, whatever. That is not maybe that directly interested or directly related to your study. So you have to review literatures that are relevant and related to your study. That is why your specific objectives should guide you and the key variables in your study should also guide you. As I've already explained this. Then, for example, what is known about household income and waste management practices? If you are to conduct a study, you will have to look at in household income. What do you mean by household income? You have to define it. What do you mean by waste you have to define it what do you mean by waste management practices you have to define them then you come down what is the relation what have uh, what are uh, what have been done about household income and waste management practices people are saying that those with a high income status you know have different kind of you know way of you know managing their waste because those that have low income some may even bury them some may you know throw them in a dumping site and other thing but those that with a high income status some also have agent like you know private waste management uh, companies coming for their waste some some like zoom lion coming for their waste and other good practices some may also have you no know, dustbin that they keep it some may even separate the waste and other things so you look at all these issues Finally, literature review must be reviewed to cover the method of analysis. 
here it always happened in the in the secondary data you know those people who are interested in the secondary data the economic the business and what have you if you are using a certain type of econometric you want to run certain type of analysis you need to review it in your literature review there are some analytical techniques there are some econometric that you want to employ you need to review literatures on that kind of econometric there are a certain kind of analysis you want to run your your work is about panel analysis what do you know about panel analysis what econometric are you going to employ what analytical technique is appropriate you need to reveal literatures on it so that it will guide you We are moving into the basic types of literature review that, or the team that we need to you know, familiarize ourselves with. And the first thing that we are looking at is the theoretical and the conceptual framework. Before we go to the theoretical and the conceptual framework, I want to comment something about planning the review. How do we even plan your research literature review? See that this entails how the literature review will be organized arranged or presented to accomplish this purpose a researcher has to know what you know work studies that have been done in the field after familiarizing him or herself with the studies or research researchers of the field to venture into the researcher then decide on how to order the discussion so your literature review, how do you present it? Because even in UGC guidelines, there is no you know, straight guide. Some people say, oh, start from theories, start from a concept, start from here. There are a way you need to go, especially the kind of research that you are doing may guide you onto how to even present your literature review. So here, some people will present it in a chronological manner. Some people want to present it thematically. Some people will go conceptually. Some people will go methodologically. Some people will use combination of this sub subject heading. For instance, if you are looking at the history, you are writing something about history, then it's better you go chronologically because it has to follow sequence, it has to follow from year or activity by activity. But if you're not conducting studies concerning history or happening of something or retrospective, there is research then you can look at the thematically and they hear the things then you decide to start from those concepts then you build on the the, the theories and you come out with the you no know, conceptual framework or you review lectures on your empirical then out of the empirical and the theoretical and those concepts you construct your conceptual framework then you are true so let's look at the theoretical framework so generally serve as a guide. When you talk about something being framework, it's a guide, it's a border, it's a it's a it's an outline, it's a scope that we want to put ourselves into. So the work that you are doing, if you are looking at the theoretical review, there's some research here is a whole thing that you need to understand. There's some research that you will only use theories or you have theoretical framework. There's some research you need to combine theories and concepts of theories and conceptual framework. And there are some work you need to only apply, or there are some ways that you can only apply conceptual framework without theory. You have to get it right. And all these things, you will have all these things right when you do appropriate literature review. You will get to know all these things. So when you're talking about the theoretical review or the theory, we are talking about provide where tested and accepted scientific explanation to complex problems. So theories normally predict the relationship among variables or between variables. So that one, they have gathered data, someone just make a hypothesis, they gather data, they tested it over time and got to know that, oh, then this one is true. There's a relationship between quantity demand and price. So when price go high, quantity demand will be down. Because they have gathered data to test that part and get to know that, oh, okay, it's true about this. 
So the theories help you to identify key variables and the relationship between those variables. So normally in the school of business and other disciplines, they may even like you to mention the theories you are going to employ and how it predicts or identify the relationship between these variables in your background. So that people know that, okay, this theory is under, you know, normally we say that the theory is underpinning the study. So if it is underpinning it, you have to let us know in the beginning, the relationship between, only if you are your study is to look at relationship, let us know what theory predict that set or such relationship that you are talking about. It's very key. So it provides a basis for research questions and hypothesis. Normally, hypothesis is being used for relationship and other things between variables and among variables. So if you have that theory in mind, or if you have read about that theory, it will guide you about the relationship that exists between these variables for you to you know, know what to really talk about. Sometimes you may get two theories in your research, depending on the variables of your study or the relationship you are looking at is accepted. The falsification of theory can be the focus of a research problem. I think the blues will talk about how you can falsify information. And if that is your 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 your, your problem or if that is your concern, you, you can set that one. That one can even trigger a research problem for you to you know embark your study on. So yeah, no, no before, let me, let me do justice to it before we go to the citation. Let's look at the theoretical framework proper. So that this theory, theoretical framework, it, this portion specify the theories, the paradigms underlying or that underpin the study. A theory is a set of interrelated concepts which structure a systematic view of phenomena for the purpose of explaining or predicting their relationship. So Fox and Bayard, 2007, they define theory as a set of interrelated proportions, or uh, propositions, concept and definition that present a systematic point of view of specifying the relationship between variables with a view of predicting and explaining the phenomena. So for you to be able to pre I explain certain phenomena like the conflict resolution that I was talking about, what theory can help you to explain the conflict between maybe individual and groups or other tribes or ethnicity? What theory can help you to explain? So this theory that we are talking about, the key thing you have to understand here is that it is helping you to explain the phenomena by predicting the relationship between them. What is the relationship? Is it that something is affecting the other one? Or is it that there is a positive or a negative relationship with it? This theory will help you to you know, understand it. So we are saying that the research framework, the, 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 the theoretical framework is a structure that provides guidance for the research as to study the research questions or finding the method and the relationship is between the variables. So that is that for the theoretical review. So uh, the, the theoretical framework. So when talk about the framework, there's a guidance, there's a body, there's an outline. So there are just theories that is guiding the research. Theory that is predicting the variables or the key concept in the research. Then the another one we look at it is the conceptual framework. So this one, the first one was theory, theoretical framework. We're talking about theories. The other one is looking at concept. So that one is conceptual framework, concept. Concept look at the key variables in the research. For instance, the one we read, it was looking at the household income and waste management practices. So here, the concept that we can derive from this work is, from that topic is household income. That is one concept. Then you have waste management practices. That is another concept. So what is the relationship between it? As I've already explained, there is a intuition or we can propose that those with a lower income, 
might have been barring or maybe dumping their refuse at unauthorized places. Then those with a higher income, they are the people doing the right thing. Or that's what we are just hypothesizing. That's why the tentative statement that we are making. So what theory underpin what we are saying? What theory can predict, can tell us the relationship between these variables? But this one, we are looking at the concept, conceptual framework. Here, the same thing is the framework is a guideline, it's an outline. And normally when people talk about conceptual framework, those in the social sciences, our, our mind just send it to those diagrams. So when we talk about conceptual framework, the first thing that comes into mind are the diagrams. Well, that's what you see most often. But in economics, it can be a model, it can be just a statement, it can be an equation. And those in the arts, it can be just a sentence. And that one will be your conceptual framework. Ideally, when you talk about the conceptual framework here, we are looking at the scrolls, the maps, the connects. This one, it connects the things and the concepts or the various variables in the phenomena. So here, it can pick some concepts from even the theories and tell us the relationship between them. So normally, the social scientists, as I said, if you have a diagram, let me see we can get diagram let me see oh no there is no diagram oh sorry maybe i have to share another page another let me see if I can share well, let me see push me let me share one conceptual framework so that you really understand what we are talking about so conceptual, no, no. conceptual, let's see, may have, no, no, let me search. I should have this. Okay, let me look at this. My own open. Hello, I just want to see if, if I can get us something about conceptual framework so that we look at the relationship proper. Because when you talk about the conceptual framework, that I say, the social scientists, we normally use diagram. We want to see diagram, how those concepts in those diagrams are related. So let's let's see. Wow. Okay, I think it is coming, so let's see. Let's see what's let me see if can oh no, where is this thing? Oh where can I share? What's you? What are you doing? Uh huh. Okay. Let me see if I can, I can share. Okay. Where is the conceptual thing? Okay. Share. Okay. So. Please, can you see my conceptual framework? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, so this is a sample of conceptual framework we are talking about. Mm, this is a sample of conceptual framework. Let me zoom so that I can get a look. So with this one, I was looking at the how we can integrate, you no know, disaster risk reduction into the planning of you know development in our various MMDAs. So I have my disaster risk reduction outcome, what I want to achieve at the end of the day. Then I have the disaster risk reduction process. So inside the process is what are the inputs? We are looking at the risk identification and impact assessment, awareness creation, early warnings, preparedness, 
emergency management, knowledge development. So we are saying that all these things may transpire. Here wasn't the complete one. So let's look at this one. So what we are saying is that here, this is the risk factor, the vulnerability. We have the social, economic, then those hazards. So this hazard, when this hazard occurs as a disaster, what are the issues that we need to look at it for? If we have emergency management, we are prepared, we have early warnings, we have recovery plans. When disaster occurs, the impacts, this one will help us to reduce the impacts. Then, so at a glance, we are looking at how the various concepts, how the various issues are relating to the others. So the arrows will be pointing us to show us which one is affecting the other, where the other one is going. So this one is the conceptual framework. So we have theoretical framework like the sustainable livelihood. It's a framework. People use that as theory and as the same conceptual framework. So when we talk about the conceptual framework, as I say, social scientists and other disciplines, they normally use these diagrams and arrows to show. So here we have the concept of disaster risk reduction, the integration, then the structures moving, you know, from one place to the other. So this one, look at the conceptual framework. So let's go back to our lay review that we were talking about. Let me share new. Okay. Okay. So. Hello. Wow. Hello. You're very well. You're saying in your area. Can you hear okay. me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so. Yeah, so I was just. Oh. Let me share now. I hear you. The free so. Screen the free so. Yeah, I'm uh, sure. Let me share. Hey. I know I'm going to say more Wow. Let me install. We are about just finishing. Okay. The, the, the next thing that we are talking about was the citation that in research you need to cite those authors that you have picked the information from you can't just you know pick someone's information and present it as if it is yours that's academic I, theft it's not acceptable so it's better okay it has come let's see if you can share yeah, then we will just do justice to it, and we are we are done for the day. I don't know. I ask you. We shall. I don't know what to toss on. We need to toss into you. Uh huh. I ask you. Where we? Okay, okay, we are here. We are the citation view. Okay, so as I was saying, we are on the citation. That's the last thing we want to do for the day so that we are done with it. God willing, tomorrow you tackle the recent method proper. You look at recent methodology. What are the issues that goes into recent methodology? We'll look at it tomorrow proper, but today I'll just mention some of them then. We are done for the day. So citation, it means to quote, to refer, or to identify a source of information, authority behind the information, and the intellectual property. Here we have the in-text citation. It means to cite or to identify a source of or authority behind an information. 
So we have, we can cite in a signal phrase or parenthesis. So that's the example. You can, the, the, the signal phrase is when you are using like, according to Opoku, we're having coffee 2016. So that's the signal phrase. And you can also present an information and at the end of the day, you bring those authors in a bracket like this. So we call it parenthesis. So Opoku Wahab and Kofi 2016. Then we have secondary citation. Sometimes you pick certain information from someone article, but you go and search, you won't see the rare one. Or maybe you go then the rare one, they are selling it, you can't have access to it. Then you have to cite the person through the, the, the one that you are having. So according to Opoku and Godfrey 2017, as cited in Mensa 2010. So maybe the work that you have access is the Mensa 2010, but the Opoku and Godfrey is the owner of the information you are talking about. So this is how you cite it. It's called a secondary citation. So ladies and gentlemen, that is where you look at it. So let me just mention few issues that we will deal with it with the methodology. So the methodology we are looking at there, you, you describe the study you want to look at it, you look at the research design, you look at the methods or the philosophy behind it. So go will and we'll be looking at the quantitative, qualitative mixed approach. You look at target population, what do we mean by population? We have the target population, we have the accessible or the accessible population. Then we look at the sampling technique and the sample size, how do we derive them? Then you look at the sources of data. Is it the primary, is it secondary data you are going to deal with it? Then you talk about data collection techniques and procedures, what to use. Then you look at the method of data analysis. So this one will go into the methodology. So we have a whole lot to learn under methodology. But tonight we are ending here and we want to tell you that same time tomorrow we'll be looking at Same time tomorrow, we will talk about issues relating to methodology. So thank you all for joining your time this evening. We are so grateful to you. God willing, tomorrow, same time, 5.30 p.m., we'll be here to continue from the methodology. When it's possible, we are able to now with the methodology and the data analysis. Then on the Sunday, we will have a whole period to look at the practicality when you talk about data analysis, what goes into it, the inferential and the descriptive, we will have time for it to go into it. Thank you, Louis. Thank you for, for, for your time and for your patience. And goodbye to you all. Before I say goodbye, is there any question? Is there anything you want to say? OK, thank you very much. Um... Please, oh, can I wanted to ask something? Okay. Um, what's the difference between an article and a journal? Like, do we have journals? We have articles. What's the difference between them? Oh, he said that the, like like we have sets. We have mother set and we have a subset. Are you getting it? Like when you talk about the journal, journal can be like a company. So the journal is a book. Are you getting it? And the article are just chapters of the book. So for instance, mm -hmm. social science, do you know that social science, we have a journal. We have Ogwa journal. Are you getting it? It's a book. Okay. Then inside the Ogwa journal, each uh, quarterly, like three months, professors and those lectures, they publish in that journal. So are you seeing the difference? Okay. So the journal is just the book. Okay company then the articles are the those research that people publish okay okay thank you very much okay welcome so as i said let's end here we have been able to you know be with our time and we have been able to you know share much information okay so oscar, i just want uh, oscar yes sir oscar yeah, so I just wanted to add a little bit about that. Uh, okay. With the journal, as you rightly said, the journal is just a, a platform that you have to send the article to.
to be published. So for example, let's say we are writing an article on, let's say, uh, what do you call it? Poverty or food security. This is the article you're writing on. But uh, you have to identify appropriate journal that will accept or that you have to publish this article. So for example, maybe you want to look at, let's say, Journal of International Health. Uh, economics or general for let's say African agriculture. So that is the general, and that is why. So as you rightly said, you no, know, it's a matter what they call it. It's more like a book, whereby you compile a lot of uh, individual research activities. And these are the uh, articles. Yeah. So he has already mentioned that. So the difference between general, the publisher, and the article. Thank you. Okay. So. Then the last thing you look at the ethics, then you are done for it. So you look at the second day, you'll be looking at the research designs and those approaches and philosophies and the data that we have and the ethical issues. Then we'll take it from there. So thank you all for your time once again and bye bye.